Whoop! What's going on, everybody? How you guys doing? My name is Ian Robinson. I'm a Master Zebras trainer and uh, training manager here at Maxon, and we always do a lot of fun stuff and things in Zebrush to make life enjoyable. You know, we like to sculpt, we like to do stuff. So welcome, welcome, and of course, to hello everyone. What's up, Icy and Travis? That one 3D artist, Elemento. How you doing? What's up, Wing? What's going on? Hello? Okay, uh, so real quick, we'll handle this question right out the gate um, about perpetual licenses and all that good stuff. So real fast, I'm going to pull up a link for you so you guys can have uh, the, the information on whether, you know, how upgrading and stuff works. So let me get that for you real quickly. So one second. Boop, 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 boop. Where was that? And of course, you can always, if you have any questions, you can always go in and like, reach out with uh, support or somebody there to help answer those questions for you. I'm not quite sure where that is. One second here. But how is everybody doing? Hopefully, everyone's doing quite well. Let me see. Also, going to throw some music on here in a second. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Hmm. <laughs> one second. Here, let me let me find that information for you. Here. Exxon upgrade licenses. Boop. Pricing and plans, I believe it is. No, that's not the right one. One second. Boop, 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 boop. License transfer. So hopefully, well, that's license transfer. I'm not sure where that information is. One second, I apologize. Upgrade, maybe that's it. Nope, that's not it. Doop, doop. That's a good question. <laughs> okay, well, what I'll do is I will send a link. Let me get you a link at least to where you can find that information here at the support center stage um, and so forth. I don't handle the licensing and so forth. I just make the stuff and I train, <laughs> I train and I make the stuff. So um, I don't want to answer a question I don't know the full answer to, but please go ahead and check out that link and help you find a guide. You can also ask directly to the support page and they should find out that information for you. Hey, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, IC, really cool. Okay, so as you see here, we have uh, a chibi Deadpool that is in the works. Of course, we ourselves, let's get some music on here. We ourselves just in the blockout stage. So we have a lot of fun stuff to cover and it's gonna be amazing. So let's go ahead and reorganize my desk space, pull up this tablet and let's get to work. And of course, if you guys have any questions about you know uh, features in ZBrush, what's going on with ZBrush, et cetera, et cetera, please go ahead and ask your questions as always, because I love them and I help answer as best I can. If I don't know the answer, I'll point you into a direction where you can find said answer. So let's get into it. And also too, let's pull up our concept. So I'm gonna to go to texture and we're gonna go up to import and let's pull up our reference here. It's always good, especially when you're doing stuff for uh, clients or if you're doing uh, anything for, you know, a lot of industries will use our, uh, we'll usually have a concept of some sort they'll be working off of, or you'll have multiple concepts. So now that we have our texture up there, one thing we want to do is make sure we go up to brush. So we go to brush, and then we're going to go to our samples and turn off spotlight projection. The only reason why is because usually with texture, spotlight projection allows you to take color and sculptural information from that image and apply it to your model. So a lot of the brushes may not quote, seem to be working, but in reality, it's just trying to transfer that information. And when there's no texture between the model and your brush, it just doesn't, it doesn't do anything to protect your model. So that is the reason why that happens. But let's go ahead and let's take a look. So last week we ended on making a belt bag. <laughs> That's what we ended up calling it. It's our little belt bag and we need to finish that. So I'm gonna come over here to version four or to viewport four. And this is where we left with the bag. Now we need to make a couple of these and we need to add in some straps and get that set up. Then we need to move on to his eyes and a lot of that detail. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and get into this. So right here, we turn on our wireframe and we see that we've been working with Z Modeler for this. We built this pretty much from that. And right now we're gonna need to have some sort of information back here. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to do this the easy way. I'm going to go ahead and go B for brush, I, and then T. That's going to give us our IMM primitives. And we're going to do a cylinder with no edges. And we're just going to drag that out just like that. And now we're going to go to split, and we're going to go to split unmasked points, which will drop it down below. And now we have this guy. And let's turn off dynamic subdivision, because that's just giving us a preview of what that looks like. And of course, with subdivision level three, and not the best geometry in the world, it's not actually looking all that clean, so we wanna turn that off. We're gonna go ahead and rotate this around. So we're gonna rotate this to the side like that. Again, turn that off, and now we have something like this. So let's actually drag this up. Let's go here to our transform type. Let's do extender. This is probably by far the most uh, useful uh, def uh, uh, deformer in the gizmo that I like to use, especially when I'm trying to get like more elongated shapes. And so I can just extend this out like such. And then two, if you hadn't noticed that anytime you hover over one of these cones, it will tell you exactly what it's doing. And so one of these cones, of course, has an apply creasing, so we can turn off creasing. And then another one of these cones here if we look at it, we have extender, we have sizes and stuff like that. But we also, let's move this over here. That's creasing, and then we can have it inflate if we needed to, so we could do that. That's not, of course, what we want to do. What I want to do is actually, where are we? Z resolution, and we want to do Y resolution. And that'll just give us just a little bit more information right about here. Perfect. And also, too, we'll get, where is it, here. Okay, now that should be fine. We'll just deal with that, It'll be perfect. And then let's come in here and accept this. You inquired at online training at Nomen, and they sadly do not allow any students that are not in California or outside the US. Tis a sad day in Texas. So y yes, um, as far as I'm aware of Nomen, the students, is a, it's a physical school. It's, a, it's an actual university. However, there is a solution for you, um, which you could actually go to the Nomen Workshop, which you don't need to be in California for. You can actually log on, and it's, it's pre-recorded videos, but there's a lot of training uh, sessions in that, and it's actually a great training resource. I still have a subscription to it myself, because as an artist, I'm always trying to learn techniques, and Nomen is one of the best schools in the world to learn from, so even if you can't you know, uh, actually go to a school itself. This would be great for you in order to um, to still study and learn. Because remember, at the end of the day, your portfolio is king. So you'd want to actually still improve and you can do that. So if you want to go to the Nomen workshop, and right now too, I think they're doing like, a, uh, they're doing a 15% off or something like that. So you can still, continue your learning through Norman. You're just not, yeah, you're not in, enrolled at Norman. But I actually highly recommend this to a lot of artists, especially if you can't go to Norman, but all the information that's there, it's, it's still relevant today. So that would be very helpful for you. So go ahead and give that a shot. It's also not nearly as expensive. Um, so I think last year I paid like 500 bucks. It might've gone up a little bit in price, but 500 USD around there. It's actually a steal, especially like there's tons of anatomy courses in there. There's, there's a bunch. So hashtag not sponsored, but also amazing shout out to them. So definitely check that out. Okay, so let's continue forward here. What we're gonna do is let's actually solo this for a second. And let's come in here. And now I wanna actually add in some resolution. And so we're gonna go to multiple edge loops. We're gonna keep our poly groups. We're gonna make sure that we have a line going down the middle because we wanna make sure that this is symmetrical. <clears throat> and as we draw this out, you can see here, it's really easy to, to stop right here and not have that symmetrical, but we want that to be symmetrical. You could also literally just go to geometry, mirror and weld, and that will add that symmetry line for you. And then you can come and add additional ones if you wanted. And then we're also going to add in a couple here. Now I'm gonna add in a couple with a mindset of actually deleting the interior. So I'm gonna come through here like this. I'm gonna go in like such. And this is where QMesh is gonna be our best friend because on each side, it's the same amount of edge loops, 
across, we can actually pop a hole right through this by going to Q-Mesh, going to Polygroup All, coming through, and just sliding that until it pops a hole directly in it which is awesome. So then you can go through. That one 3D artist, not a problem, absolutely. I highly recommend that. I, like I said, I have a subscription to them. They're amazing. And yeah, hopefully that helps you out. That continues your learning process. So. Okay, so now I have a couple more edge loops in here. And here we're gonna come in and we're actually going to change the insert to interactive elevation. And we're going to add a couple edge loops and then we're gonna pull this out. And the reason why we're gonna do this is because we want a little bit of rounding here. So let's do a couple more. So if you go to the left or to the right on the screen, you'll see it bows it out with that. And then as I go up and down, it actually increases or decreases the resolution. So you could say something like that would be pretty cool. And then if I hit this, it'll start the rounding. Now that's a little pointy and I don't want that. So let's go just a little bit lighter than that. So maybe like that. Yeah, that's a little bit better. That, that works out way better. And then let's go ahead and grab this color information. So hit C over this actual, let's hit C right over here, go to color and fill object. So that way it's exactly the same. Now for this, um, I'm actually, we're not going to see this loop, but this loop is for me. This loop is so that I know exactly where the belt and stuff should hang. So what I can do here at this point is we're actually going to get rid of some of this uh, geometry that we don't need. And we're going to end up colliding this a lot, right? So I'm now going to come through and we're just going to go ahead and hide this information. Or what we can do actually, let's come back here. Let's go to extender and let's actually extend this first. And then let's go ahead and add in, where is it? That's the extender, extender. Where are we at? Our brain is on fire today. Let's go with our resolution right here. Say something like that. Great. And now we can come in here and we can actually maybe get rid of this stuff right there. That will be good. And we'll go ahead to delete hidden. And then let's go ahead and close this. Now we could just close holes, but I want the geometry to be really good. If I just do close holes, let's turn on the wireframe. If I go to modify topology and I say close holes, I wanna make sure the mic's in front of my face. I feel like uh, sometimes I'm talking away from it. If I wanna do the close holes method, then what will happen is I'll get this kind of triangulated mesh. Now, if I'm gonna go to Unreal Engine or make this a game ready model, which we are in ultimately making this a game ready model, then we want to be able to have nice clean topology for unwrapping and texturing. So right now, this isn't clean. This is kind of nasty. We don't like that. So we could simplify this mesh a little bit. In fact, you know what we could do? Let's go back and let's save ourselves a little bit of heartache here. And watch this. We're gonna we're gonna make our lives a little bit simple. So I'm actually gonna delete a good chunk of these. And you'll see why in a second. So I'm just gonna come through, I'm holding Alt and deleting this. So yeah, I am taking a step backwards, but that's okay. Because this step backwards is gonna help me have two steps forward. So I'm gonna come through like this. I'm gonna say, yeah, that should be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and accept this. So let's accept this in our life. So let's say, yep, accept. Let's go ahead and come through. Let's get rid of this, so let's delete hidden. Now let's come down and let's go to, where are we, where are we? We're here, display display properties, not flip, but double-sided, there we go. And now we're gonna hover over this edge and we're gonna say, let's zoom in so we can see, hover over an edge, come over here and say we're going to, uh, we can either close or we can bridge. I'm gonna say bridge because I want actually, let's hover over that edge. I want edges. So I want this edge to this edge. And that's gonna go ahead and close that hole completely. I'm gonna say this edge to this edge. And that's gonna close that for me. So now you can see here it's completely closed. Now we can go back in and we can add our edge loops, right? So I'm gonna come over here and let's make sure that we go insert and just our specified, perfect. Let's go ahead and grab a couple. So let's go down one, two, three, four, boop. Okay, see, so like my pin is being a little sensitive. So now I'm just gonna do this. There we go. 
and that actually helps with all of that. Then we come back in here, interactive elevation, and we can drag this out a little bit. Say something like that. Perfect. And now this gives us that. Uh, how do I select all those faces and get rid of them? I apologize, I missed that part. Not a problem. No, absolutely. No worries at all. So what I did was I press and held Alt. So with Z Modeler, I'm hovering over a face. If you press and hold Alt, you can make temporary selections like this. And what's cool is um, for this, I can actually punch a hole. So that's the first one I did. The second one I did was I actually just did Control Shift and I dragged this around and I basically hit a part. And as I do this, if I press and hold Alt while I'm dragging this, that will be a negative selection. And that will go through and do that. And then you just say delete hidden. And now that's deleted. And as long as you don't have subdivisions, you're totally fine. And then to close those holes, we just hovered over an edge and we went to bridge those edges. And every two edges, will it'll connect for you. And so that's how we made that. And this helps keeps our mesh very clean, very tidy which is important, of course, because we want to be able to, you know, have nice clean UVs. And if our mesh is nice and clean, then that's going to help us out so much. There we go. And then what we can do is we can literally just collide this into our actual belt bag, say something like that. And now we have this guy here. And we're never going to see the back of this. So I'm OK with the collision happening, because when we bake it, I'm never going to have the bag independently. It's always going to be on him. So th these are going to be static to his body all times. I have no interest in him actually really interacting with the bag. If I do, then I would probably make a separate bag that's a little bit more high fidelity and a little bit more um, uh, user friendly. But even still, uh, when I bake this, it's not going to be super terrible. There won't be a lot of imperfections. Um, but since I'm never going to see the back of this, I'm OK if there are some minor imperfections. Sometimes you just make those decisions on what your intended goal is. Of course, you always want the work to be the best. But if you get like a, a, a weird little error here in the bake, it's not going to it's not going to bother me. I'm not going to lose sleep over it since it's a personal project. But if I were to do this for a portfolio piece, definitely clean that up a little bit more. But you'd be surprised how easy baking is these days. And you'd really be surprised how a lot of times the algorithm accounts for that. And I may not get any errors, but small collision. I just wanted to get rid of the geometry, of course. That doesn't really bother me. So that's that collision is going to be, it's not going to be too, too bad. So I'll, I'll live with that. <laughs> so just kind of where my mind's at. Every time I watch you sculpt my model uh, and model, my brain expands. Dude, big brother, Gannon, I'm here. Also, love the name, <laughs> but dude, I'm here for you, man. So awesome. Not a problem. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, and I have a small question about Z Modeler. Can you extrude an edge? And sorry, can you pursue? Yeah, can you extrude an edge preserving the direction and width, and like a straight extrusion? I uh, it gets weird while I do it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So here, let's let's do this. So this works more for open open edges. You can extrude an edge. So first and foremost here, let me just you know turn off dynamic. If I hover over an edge here and stuff like that, and I say extrude, what you want to do is make sure that it's open ended, because when you extrude, when I click here, it's closed. So it, there's no real way for that edge to extrude out on its own. But let's actually do this. Let's go insert and let's go to 3D plane. And here, let's just quickly showcase this guy. And let's make this really simple. So come here to geometry. Let's reconstruct this down to um, this level and say delete hidden. Now, what you can do is when you hover over this edge and you hit extrude, you have a few options. You have edge and edge loop. You have edge loop, poly loop. You have a bunch of cho uh, choices. But here, we're just going to be focusing on its regular uh, extrusion. But I do want to point out in the modifier, you do have extend uh, surrounding faces and a regular extrude. And this modifier is going to really help you out. So if I come here with this base value and I start extruding out an edge, you know, then I'm able to drag this out. And you can see here that it's fairly straight. OK, now if I control Z that and I start dragging this out again and I press Alt one time, it's now going to do a partial loop. And if I tap Alt one more time again and hold it, it's going to do the entire 
edge uh, connecting edge loops. So then I have something like this. And it is going to be, if I turn it on its side, it's perfectly straight and that's gonna help you out. But the thing is, is looking at what this modifier does, it's extending surrounding faces. So it's trying to, you know, again, uh, connect to anything that's surrounding that area. If I go to regular extrude, okay, and I start dragging this out, now it's just, you know, it's just gonna kind of focus on that regular extrude. But every time I press Alt, it is giving me options. And you can see here now as I'm pressing holding Alt, it's not extending out uh, it's, this way it's just extruding that edge loop. So it's actually identifying it from the complete center until I go the other way. It's a really interesting algorithm. So ultimately, I just keep it on extending extrude, but you can do uh, a couple other modifiers. You can do free angle, you can do planar angles, and uh, perpendicular angles. So if you change this, you're gonna get a different effect. But ultimately, it may not be super noticeable to you because this is just a single plane, but as you're working with models underneath it, so you can actually set things up for snapping. And this is also a way you can do um, any type of uh, retoppling with um, actual geometry. So this is the irregular extrude function in itself. And so, yes, you can, absolutely. Again, you want to make sure, though, that it is a single-sided geometry. There's nothing connected to it because if we go back to this guy here, and again, we try to extrude an edge, it's not going to let me. This is a closed surface, so it's not, it's not letting me really do anything. However, it is something to note I, that, and I've had this happen before, whereas if I'm dragging this out, so let's say I drag this out, and then I'm gonna drag this out here, that snapped, okay, I wanna drag this one out, and I accidentally you know, maybe I, I tap this or I do a small extrude like this and then I don't catch that, then, you know, sometimes this can happen where you're you're moving stuff around and you just, you hit an edge and then like you end up getting it like this. Like, where is it? See if I can, see if I can get, if, let me see if I can break it is what I'm trying to say. So if I drag this up, maybe I drag this down like such. Oh, it's not letting me break it. <laughs> Sometimes I've had it where I've been extruding stuff out and I get like this little, little bit that comes up and I don't catch it. And then it gives me some weird geometry. So just like anything, you always just kind of want to look at what you're doing. But you know, what's cool is of course, you know, if you just tap an edge one time after you do that, that action, it's going to repeat that. So if we drag this out, let's come here real quick. We drag this out like this and then I tap, tap, tap then you can extrude out individuals. Or one more modifier that you really wanna pay attention to is number of rows. So here under the modifier, if I go to number of rows, I can have five of these things coming out like this. And then I could tap that and boom. So you can see here real quick how fast it is to create your kind of plane shape here. Now, of course, this is creasing as we go about doing that. So we can just uncrease all, no big deal. But again, that's because we had a creased edge on there. Um, is there an option for creased edging? Do, 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 do. No, just identify that there was a creased edge. So I got rid of the creased edges and now we could do this. So yes, to your answer, yes. And hopefully that helped you out with a ton of other stuff. Very cool. Uh, let's see, ha ha he he, how you doing? Welcome back, welcome back. Hello there, Ian. I got a big, uh, a really big problem. I have, I got two files in ZPO that are, that are body and hand part. The problem is how can I merge the two files into one hand to body? Thank you for your answer in advance. Like how do you merge these two together? Do you mean, like you mean ZPR or, or ZTL? Like you have two ZTL files, you have two different files? I'm gonna assume that's what you're what you're talking about. Um, you can if you can confirm that'd be great. But yeah, if you have two different files that you need to merge together, it's actually a pretty easy approach, and you'll lo you'll love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this guy here. So I have, let's assume I was actually making this belt bag on its own, right? And I had another file, so I'm making this belt bag, or I want to borrow this belt bag from another model to and I wanna add it to another model, which if you built something from scratch, 
and you have you're using the asset somewhere else or you need the same type of asset somewhere else it's really easy to copy that stuff so let's say i have this guy out here let's just make poly mesh 3d so i have this other project and this project's really fun and i want to add the belt bag here so there's a couple ways you can add files from one side to another so all you do first is you load that file type so let's see i have a little bot here so let me come here and let me where's my sculpt here okay cool so i have this guy here i'm gonna open this up give it one second because it's downloading from OneDrive. so i have this little guy right here that i've recently made and he needs a belt bag then what i can do is of course I can copy, if these aren't merged together, of course, I can copy a single subtool and I can come over here and I can paste that. But that's only going to be the one object, right? And that's not really what you want. So here, I can actually copy the folder. And the way you can do that is you actually go up to uh, Z Plugin and Subtool Master, and there is a copy folder. And now I can copy everything in that folder. I can come over here, go back to Z plugin, Subtool Master, and paste that folder. And it's gonna bring everything in that folder, including its naming convention, on over. And now I can go here like to this version right here. I could say this is the this is the file type here, and now I can actually select these things, move them all with the, of course, with the um, pizza box. So I can move everything over and then come back to version one turn on my little robot guy turn on this let's go ahead and just hide this for a second so i'm going to hide these guys turn this one this one this one on and now i can give him my belt bag so there you go so i can bring this over into my scene so if that's what you meant that's the one of the best ways to do it um, but you just load the ztls and then you copy them on over you could also do a older technique, which is merge visible. So if you have, let's say, um, we'll just hide this guy. So let's say you have the bag here and you want to move all of this over to the, you know, to another subtool. You can actually just go up here to merge and merge visible. And then that's going to create a, a merged bag right up here. So that's going to merge everything into one, and then you can copy this and move that over to another one. So hopefully that's what you meant. Let me know if so, and then we can go ahead and... ZBrush project file, yeah. Okay, so for the ZBrush project file, what you can do is you can actually come up here under tool and go load from tools from project. So then if you have a project, let me see if I have one here. Uh... Is this a project? No, I don't have a project here at the moment, but all you need to do is find a, wherever your project is. So load one project, then come up here to tool, load tools from project, select that project and we'll load it as a ZTL. And that will, that will just help you out. So here, I'll give you, I'll show you. So here we'll go here to file and save as, and then I'm gonna go ahead and under, not Lilbot, we're gonna go to DP Chibi. So we'll go uh, test dp boom just like that so we'll say okay let this save as an entire project so i'm going to load in a new project just to showcase it so i'm going to come here and grab our demo head and nope don't save changes okay great so we have this guy so you can see here there's no more chibi deadpool uh hanging out so you go load tools from project and then right here is my test dp zpr we just created go ahead and say open and then if you watch real quick, here is still my demo head, but it also loaded this version and this version, which had my little bot and also had my, my Deadpool character over here. So this is how you can actually come through and get everything sent over together. And then you could just, and then boom, you're good to go. And then of course, if there are things that copied over you don't want, you can just say delete all on the object that you have. It will delete everything. And I, like, I don't want this demo head, so boom, you could say boom, just like that. So, or we can just come in and just say, open that, and let's open up our ZPR. And boom, when we're right back to where we started. And of course, too, let's just go ahead and delete all here, grab this guy, and then we can go ahead and say alt save, and that will save that. 
What's up, Leonard? How you doing? What's up, Rafi? Good morning, good morning. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the... Yeah, <laughs> I did get a haircut this week. Doopy doopy doop. Um, let's see here. Hello, sorry for bothering you. I want to... Doop -doop -doop. Oh, no, thank you for that. We're good, but thank you. Uh, let's see. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Can you make a session making jewelry piece as I'm a jewelry designer? You know what? I'm actually starting to learn jewelry from Tama Wittelbach. Really awesome, really awesome uh, jewelry sculptor and just an amazing person. And in fact, here, let me point you to one of his latest streams. So let me come over here real quick. And so let me uh, showcase that. He likes to do critique sessions as well, but he's truly... Uh, and amazing. We also have um, another jewelry. He goes by Nacho. So let me pull up some of their streams. You can go check them out. I am just starting. I just started taking the ZBrush jewelry work course from Tama Wittelbach, and um, it's it's awesome. Tama ZBrush Tama Wittelbach. Blah, blah, blah. Actually, here let me go to the ZBrush side. Let's go to what we did live. And I think he streamed last week, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he did. He streamed last week. It's actually good to see him back. And here, you could check this one out. There you go. That's Tama Wittelbach. Let's also, let's see here. Um, let's go ZBrush Nacho. He also does live streaming as well. And here are some of his streams that you can check out. And this one's also a playlist. What's up, Sheriff? How you doing? Welcome, welcome. Zachary, hello. Welcome in, guys. Hey, what's up, L. Renderman? Hey, bro. Uh, is there a way to make a bevel to a cube, um, but that bevel is only on a single edge, similar to Maya or Blender? There is a sculptural way of doing that. Um, let me show you how I make bevel edges using Z Modeler. It's a little bit of a different approach. Um, so yeah, let me let me showcase that for you. No problem. So yeah, let's come over here. It's a little bit different approach. So Z Modeler does not support n-gons, and that's the big difference between those two tools. And that's actually why we can't just like create a rounded corner the way that you're thinking. There is a sculptural way of doing that um, that I don't see a lot of people utilizing here, but it's actually quite clever because it allows you a little bit more freedom in my opinion. So here, if I were to just kind of like divide this up a little bit, give me some geometry here, just say something like that. Um, what you could do is actually use a brush. So if I wanted to do a bevel arc like this, I can actually click this part, click this part here, and I can just come through and bevel this like such, and that will actually give me a nice beveled edge. We also have a chamfer brush. So they call it bevel flat, but it's more of a chamfer. Say something like that, boom, 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 boom. And you can chamfer that edge like such. And then what's neat about this, of course, is that you can Z remesh this pretty quickly. So you can go to detect edges adapt size down to zero, and let's just go ahead and see what that gives us. And that actually should give us a really nice, uh, should need some good topology. That actually cracked just a little bit there. So let's do ourselves one more step. Let's come here to group by normals at let's say 25 degree angle, group by normals. Let's give us, let's actually try maybe 15, say something like that. Let's make that a different poly group. Make this a different poly group. I want different poly groups. There we go. And then we can just crease those edges. So we can go geometry, crease, and crease PG. And then from there, we can, of course, Z remesh that. We can keep creases, move that down. Also, five wasn't a enough information. So maybe scale that up to 10. Yeah, I see that breaks right there. So let's kick that up right there. So this is one way you can go about doing it. Um, but for Z Modeler, how I approach bevels, is, yeah, see that's not working out 100%, which is okay. Um, for Z Modeler, however, wait, where are we? Why did that back up? Let's go, We let's go back. 
For Z modeler, the thing is, is that, again, we can't create end gons. So with the bevel approach here, let's first get like a clean cube. So let's actually come up here to our gizmo and go poly cube. That's fine. Get something like that. That's okay. Okay. And now from here, we'll just use our Z modeler brush. So of course here, it's always going to be detecting the edges in itself. So if I were to go to bevel and then go to edge loop partial, uh, do, 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 that might be the way to go about doing it, but it's going to end right about here. It's, it's looking at those vertices again, because it can't create that end gone, it's not going to be hundred percent true. So instead what you can do is I can go to insert and delete an edge. Let me see something actually. I wanted to see if this works and that does not work. What was it? So was it outside or inside? I go outside. Hmm. Yeah, that's not working there. Um, so the other thing to do too, and sometimes I'll just do this manually is I'll mask this off. I'll move this up here in the corner and then I'll actually just kind of bring this down, kind of get something, something like this, which kind of rounds it for you. And then there you can crease some edges so we can add some edge flow here. So we can go to crease and we can just crease. Yeah, I can just crease the complete edge loop. Actually, let's do partial. So let's do edge loop partial here and here, here and here. So then that rounds that off in that section. So this would be more of a, this is more of that manual approach, of course, but this is how I would approach it. Keeping those quads as clean as possible. Just a manual movement just makes it a little bit, you know, it'll do the trick for you is my point. And then you get a kind of a nice round edge in that way. So, but the, you know, again, there's no NGON support in the Z modeler at this time. And so because of that, it can't make up that topology on the side. So you kind of just have to manipulate it a bit. So if you keep it as low as possible, you can go this approach. Awesome. Ha ha he glad you got it. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, Christopher, we are building the, the, we are building the actual character. However, too, I also answer a ton of questions as I'm the, as the master trainer. So I take a ton of questions. So yeah, we're going to continue forward. Oh, you guys. Okay, cool. Gotcha, Sheriff. Perfect. Okay. Let's continue forward and then we'll take some more questions here in a bit, but yeah, that's the approach I would take for that. Okay, let's go ahead and delete this guy. Boom, boom, boom. All right, now that we have this, let's go ahead and start adding the belt bag uh, the rest of the way. So let's go ahead and again, we're gonna push this right in there. Not too worried about that colliding like I mentioned before. And now I'm gonna go ahead and we have things that are, uh, we have things that are a little bit separated, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab this guy and we're gonna go ahead and split unmasked parts. So we just have everything just a little bit different. And let's just go ahead and grab this. We're gonna just move it off onto the side. Say something like that. And let's go back here to visible one. Let's go ahead. Let's also show the reference one more time and let's clear this. Okay, so we're gonna come through here. We're just gonna grab this belt bag. Okay, I moved out the way and with the pizza box, we're gonna start posing it up. So let's actually get this here. Let's scale this. Because he's a chibi, sometimes we wanna change the proportions a bit. So, and actually let's go ahead and just real fast. Let's hide the body. So we can, or at least the head itself. So we can see what's going on here. But sometimes because because he's a bigger, like he's a chibi character, he's cute and adorable in all the right ways, right? We want to actually think about the size of the bag and the type of, you know, the type of uh, what the scaling of that looks like. Sometimes small characters look good and cute with big items. So we'll kind of adjust that and see what we get. But let's get this relatively positioned where we want it. That's fine. Say something like that. Boom, boom. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to isolate this part and I'm going to push this in a little bit more. 
And then we're going to pull this all back. Say something like that. And we'll finesse it a bit. But let's get that positioned. Say something like this. And maybe a little bit smaller would work out just fine. Okay, great. Wonderful. Let's also take a look at that position. Let's move it up. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that should work out just groovy. And now we're just going to go ahead and duplicate this as many times as necessary. Now, of course, too, what we can do real fast is we could just cut our UVs here if we needed to, or we can just, you know, end up just copying these. But what we'll do is we'll end up copying these for placeholders. And when we finally get to the UV stage, we'll UV just one. We'll finalize one bag and then we'll UV it. And then we'll just recopy all of that into, you know, so we have multiple versions and stuff like that. So, and we could put the bag all in one spot. So I'm going to go ahead at this point and going to place this here. I'm going to merge this all together. So now I have this and now we're just going to go ahead. No, grab this guy. There we go. And let's just go ahead and control copy. Let's get a few more of these here. Maybe move that up. There we go. And we can just solo this out for a second. Actually, let's just hide the body. Where's the body at? Okay, let's come in here. It's in, it's in body suit, so let's just hide the body suit. Except for we do want the belt. We just don't want the bodysuit. There we go. Okay, and we can go ahead and control drag this up here. Cool. And we're just going to position these where we need them to be. And we can have as many or as few of these as, of course, we want, but it's our world, so we can create them as such. Do you want that to kind of follow suit? Maybe slide that down, say something like that. So maybe we'll say, yeah, we'll say like, let's do one more because we're going to mirror and weld this after. And let's get this here. Okay, perfect. It's got to rotate this around. We'll just figure out where this all should live. There we go. And then here, let's just go ahead to not merge. Let's go to geometry, modify topology, and mirror and weld that. And now let's take a look. If we want to add a couple more, we can. It's a ridiculous amount of bags, but hey, that works. And actually, let's fix this real fast. So let's come here. Let's actually rotate this around. We can fix the belts which is fine. And let's do this. Let's go ahead and let's just solo this. Now that we have a good position of all this, let's solo this and let's go to poly groups, auto groups. Let's go ahead and select this by going ahead to control shift, dragging these items here and then control shift A. So then we isolate just the one bag. Perfect. And then we can go ahead, add this here and just rotate this around and make this stuff fit. So these will become more placeholders at this point. Let's grab that, control shift A. And like I said, we'll finalize the one bag when we finally get that. And then let's also grab these guys here, control shift A, mask that out, invert that selection. Maybe we move that up just a bit. Okay. And finally, let's actually do one more. So we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna Control Shift A. Okay. And I'm just gonna make this all one polygroup for now. Let's go ahead and go do geometry, mirror and weld. Perfect. Isolate this guy. Mask that one off. Inverse that. And then we can actually Control Copy this. Rotate this one around so we get one that is in the middle. 
There we go. Say something like such. And then here, let's go back and let's just do polygroups, auto groups. We're just going to go ahead and now give us a little bit of spacing in between each one. So control shift A, grab this. We'll reposition this and I'll check the chat one more time. So we just want some nice even spacing. And two, we can actually grab, of course, our select lasso. Whoop, grab that. Control shift A. And we're just now just moving things along. Actually, let's grab this one more time. Perfect. And then let's move that. So you can see here, it's just a it's just a matter of rinse and repeat. Let's move that over, say like that. Grab this one more time, and just move that just a little bit, just giving it some spacing. Okay, now that we have that, we can always position the belt itself. But now we, we're looking at the body, and we're taking a look at everything, and. Okay, those might be a little big. So let's actually do this thing real quick where we're gonna come down here. And we're just gonna go ahead, grab all of the belts itself, submerge that in the center, and we can scale that down. And then we can reposition that. There we go. Okay, we'll leave that for now and then we'll go ahead and we'll check future. Woo, chat is going off, which is awesome. Hey, uh, if you wanted to sculpt a gun which has organic style to it, but is also some hard surface shapes, what would be your approach on retopologizing it? Is Z remesher okay for stuff like that? So, Z remesher is actually quite powerful, and you could if if the model itself is never going to deform, meaning it's never going to bend or shape, then a lot of this stuff at the end of the day gets triangulated. The purpose of manual retopology is that you get to control your edge loops 100%, which helps you in the long run get cleaner UVs. However, there are times in which I've used zero mesher for projects because it's just easier ultimately to just get it done depending on the time frame. And if the animation team itself takes a look at the model and they're like, yeah, this is actually really good, then go ahead and move on. But what I always encourage is that you check with the animation team in itself. Now, if it's your own personal project, you're kind of the key master and you get to kind of figure out what works best for you. At the end of the day, you always want to achieve clean UVs and clean mesh. So then it can be uh, it can be textured properly and it could eventually make it into the final bake, which then has no errors to it. So it's it's all about time management versus sacrificing what people may or may not see. At the end of the day, it's really up to you. I can't really tell you, you know, do this and forever it's gonna be like that. It's really dependent on the job. However, again, I've used Zebra Mesher for animated models before. In fact, I like to say this a lot. Um, there's a model specifically that I did for coach.com a couple years ago at this point. Um, and they actually, I just bumped the mic, my apologies. Um, this mesh was 100% Z remeshed. We needed it out quick, fast, and in a hurry. So what I ended up doing, so if we come over here to my art station real fast, um, and for those of you who would like to check out my art station, feel free to do so. Boop, there you go. So here, if we come down to this Rexy model right here, so I click this guy, this mesh in itself is 100% Z remeshed. And it's... I just used poly groups, I isolated section, but then what I did was I reached out to the animation team and I was like, hey, I know we need this model really quickly. If you guys wanna start building the rig, I already tech I'm in the middle of texturing it, but here's the mesh I'm using. Let me know if this works for you. Because again, we were trying to do multiple things at once. And uh, they came back to me and they said, this mesh is perfect, we can use this mesh. And I said, great, wonderful. I didn't tell them, I see remeshed it and here you go. I just had them identify the mesh itself. Now, could it be better? Absolutely, but it worked for what we were trying to do. And ultimately, anytime you see a loop like this going around the mesh, so here's a, a loop going around, um, that was controlled by a polygroup. So I used polygroups to my favor, and this was ultimately the mesh itself, which is only 42,000 triangles. So this is actually quite low for the character. I could have probably 
even gone a little bit higher with this. But again, all of this was actually just Ziva meshed. And I just used polygroups and, and I manually went in and cleaned up some loops if it broke using ZModeler. Um, but you can see here, here's the color information and then here's the final result. And this worked out for what we were trying to achieve. But again, I checked with the animation team on that and I highly encourage that you do the same thing. So always check with you, the, you know, to whoever you're working with. It's very important to make sure that that's a thing. So that's my advice on that. Oh, thanks, Icy Film. Okay, cool, do do do. Um, you're so welcome, Christopher, not a problem. A lot, sometimes I feel like my streams, uh, I never get anything done like on, my, on the project because we're answering questions. But to be fair, that's actually exactly what I love to do. I love being able to come here and help answer questions because this is a great resource for the community to come in and learn more about ZBrush. So consider this like a live Ask ZBrush, but we're always building something. So definitely... <laughs> Definitely something to, that's kind of how I've, I've built this stream and I, I, I love doing it. So hopefully you guys appreciate it too. Hopefully it's helpful. That's really at the end of the day. I just hope it's helpful. Pouches, my fave. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what's up, Ryan? How you doing? Any questions on how to make teeth? You're sculpting a bust for rigging in Maya. I'm having uh, struggles in sculpting teeth. Teeth are fun, but they are weird, man. They are, it depends on what kind of teeth you're going for. Are you going for cartoony? Are you going for realistic? At the end of the day, let's take a look at this character. So teeth for this guy, honestly, all I did was I took a, a I took a cube and then I rounded it up and I shaped it and then I just kind of stuck it in there and then I used clay buildup for that. So here, I'll, I'll demonstrate that for you real quick. Let's go ahead and hit save and let's just put him over here. We got pouches, we're gonna do a face mask next. So um, let's go here, let's insert a cube. Say so yes, beautiful cube, let's make a tooth. So what I did was I came down here to uh, display, pro I'm sorry, to initialize, and I Q-cubed it, right? And sometimes I'll Q-cube like this. I'll just go one, 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 one. So it's perfectly just, it's very low topology. And then ultimately I mask out a certain section, kind of expand this a little bit, get something like this and something like this. Depends, like for front teeth, if you look at human teeth, I was about ready to show you my teeth. I'm like, you want to see my teeth? <laughs> you want to see my teeth? Here we go. Um, so, of course, reference is king. But if we want to take a look at uh, teeth, be prepared, guys. It's going to get weird. So teeth in itself, there are different. There's a few different types of teeth. Now, I'm no dentist, so don't mind me. But at the end of the day, you have a few different types. You have your canine, or what I like to call my vampire teeth, your premolar, your molar, and your incisor. And each one of these has a different purpose. Usually the incisor, which is more of your front teeth, those tend to come to a point. These are, of course, the bottom. These are your roots. Your premolars are more like in the, if I remember right, more in the middle. And then your molars kind of go all the way in the back, the ones that are really good for cr crunching. And of course, your canines are good for, well, for biting. <laughs> so so the side the incisors and the canines when you bite an apple, when you when you bite a piece of steak, when you when you chew when you're biting things off, that's what these are for. And then your premolars and your molars are for the actual chomping. So when it comes to teeth in itself, you can see you have your incisors here in the front and your canines here. So these are the ones that usually come to some sort of point. And then from there, you have your molars. So if we were to go on to the molar, molars. Again, I always joke I'm secretly becoming a doctor because the amount of anatomy knowledge you end up learning is insane. So if we look at, it's gonna get weird, I'm so sorry guys, but <laughs> you can see here as we go towards the back of the teeth, your molars and what they're designed to do, that that's, that's really where you'll start pushing all that back. And so here's a good indication of, again, your incisors are in the front, your canines here. You only have two on the bottom and two on the top, typically. So you have your you have four canine. 
And then here are your pre-molars right here. This is usually what you can, what you start and then your molars in the back. So um, reference, again, the incisors and the canines come to a point while the rest are kind of more of a flat plane. So when we're going through this stuff, right, let's make our incisors here. So again, I would come through and I would actually start kind of just blocking out what that shape would be. And then here, let's actually add in some edge loops. So I'm gonna use multiple edge loops so I can get like a perfectly in the middle, uh, kind of in the middle, um, let's reverse that. Uh, uh, yeah, words, in the middle uh, edge loop. And for this, I'll just go mirror and weld here. So a lot of times I will just start, I rarely sculpt the, the roots but that's just me. If I need to sculpt the root, I absolutely will, but most of the time I don't. So you can see here, just by using the, uh, the dynamic subdivision, you can start to see how this stuff is shaped. So now I'll add in with symmetry, maybe an edge loop right here, 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 just give it a little bit of topology, say something like that. And then I'll start manually shaping this. So I'll grab my move brush and I'll come in here and kind of get it something like this. And then I'm not afraid to smooth things down just a little bit because it gives a little bit more of an organic feel. And then I'll come back and re redo that. And this is really down and dirty, but here you can kind of see just my thought process behind this. And then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and just subdivide a few times. And then what I like to do is actually use trim dynamic and I'll come in and start giving it a little bit more of an organic hard surfacey shape because your teeth are bone and bone is you know bone is hard it's solid well it's hollow because there's bone marrow in the middle but it's it's quite dense right so it's 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 your natural hard surface part of you um, is any part of a bone so your fingernails your teeth although your fingernails are more of a liquid that harden that's another fun fact. But here, what I would also do is create a little bit of a sharp point to this. So, because you wanna think about like, you know, how, um, how light's gonna catch it. So I'll usually do something like this. I'll create a nice sharp edge. And then with, with my clay buildup, I'll actually give it just a little bit of texture as I sculpt on it. And so these would be how I would do my incisors and stuff. And I would just, go ahead and just play around with this until I found something that I liked. It depends on how you're going for it too. You know, there's many approaches. You can also use the move brush with your curve and accu curve and get a little bit more of a pointed sharp edge to some things. Now, if you're going for molar, I find molars to be a little bit easier. So if I were to come back here and just uh, Q cube this one more time, Oh yeah, there's uh, there's subdivisions. So let's delete that and let's Q cube this. Molars are quite fascinating because they're more uh, rectangular shape. So I would just actually elongate this, we like this, just a little bit, mask off the bottom. And then here, I would actually just kind of flare this up. And then here, I would just, you know, what I would do is I would actually use so Z, uh, Z modeler to get some cleaner topology. I'm gonna use inset all poly groups and actually inset this a little bit. Say something like that. And then I would come in here, the edge and just start adding some edge loops. Okay. And then maybe to we'll grab a couple like this, mask this off and I'd actually kind of pop this down a little bit. Maybe actually let's add another edge loop. Let's actually inset this here real fast just to get some control. Grab this point, kind of inset this down just a little bit. And then I would start with a sculptural approach. So again, I would round this off. This is actually quite low. So again, I would probably subdivide this a little bit and then using a move brush, Right, I'd start shaping this however I thought would work, work well. Using my sculpture brush, I'd actually dig a hole up in here. Yeah, I guess something like this. And then I would just come through and kind of hit this approach. 
and then maybe do a little bit of a smooth, kind of build up some of these areas here. So again, I would come in here, build up this side, build up this wall a little bit. I'm doing this super fast, but hopefully this is helping you out just a bit. Come through again, maybe build up on the sides a little bit. Just start ref taking your reference, getting a lot of this here. And then these here, you can kind of pinch them just a little bit, get them a little bit closer together, start subdividing a bit, and then using any types of textures. And then it's just placing each tooth and refining. So again, just take a look at that reference, but those that's how I typically approach teeth. And if you do a set of full teeth, like do human teeth, do a whole set of them, then you always have them. And then you can just update that once a year. But I would, I would actually, yeah, sculpting teeth and tongue, is, it's actually quite enjoyable. So those are my uh, quick tips on how to approach that. Great questions, by the way. All right, let's do the mask. Do, 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 do. Okay, uh, what about the process of doing IMM or the chain start middle reputation uh, at the uh, and end for the belt? I mean, for skipping these bags positioning and focusing on the belt stripe itself. I actually pulled the belt stripe itself from the body mesh itself. Um, I actually just copied this section here and just broke down this area. But yeah, absolutely, you can use an IMM to do that as well. I like to hand approach a lot of things. I'm typically, that's typically my approach. I like to do things a little bit more manually. But yeah, absolutely, you can totally do that. Not a problem at all. All right, let's get into making, of course, the eyes themselves. So we need to now make the eyes and start bringing this character. Because right now we just have a head shape. And also, too, this head shape is just a little loose. So here we're going to go ahead and let's shrink that down just a little bit. There we go. That's a little bit more accurate. Go ahead and hit save. I'm going to get some water real fast. Making these 3D models seems a lot easier than it actually is. There's a, there's a tip to making 3D models, and it's just repetition. Practice makes permanent, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah, making 3D models and stuff like that takes a lot of practice, a lot of time. And then you also have uh, just a lot of you know technical know-how. And you end up also learning a lot of things that maybe you didn't quite think you were ever going to get into. Like for me, anatomy was always a thing that was gonna happen. However, however, I didn't think I'd get as invested in anatomy as I have, which is quite fascinating. So, so it's all about just, yeah, it's all about uh, practice and making that, uh, you know, making that leap to, to really just lean into your studies. Okay. So I'm not gonna modify the head too much, but what we're gonna do is we're going to do a paint over. So I'm gonna duplicate this head by hitting Control Shift D, which duplicates any folder or subtool that's selected. And then I'm going to isolate this, subdivide a few times, because I want some topology. I'm gonna go a little heavy. I'm gonna go about 330,000 active points. And we're just gonna go ahead and say, delete lower. We're gonna skip this song because uh, for some reason there's lyrics on it and we don't want that. And then now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to paint where we want these eyes to be. I always recommend that we paint first before we just start masking out and stuff like that. So it's just more of a preference. So I'm gonna to go to tablet under preference and turn that off. And what that does is allows me to draw without having any type of gradation, you know, or softness to it. If I use the tablet, it's all pen pressure, and that's cool, but I want to use this as a mask. So we're going to go to preference, turn off use tablet. It's the quickest way to just go through there and get a really nice, uh, nice clean line. And here, we're going to go ahead and just with the stroke, go up to lazy mouse and turn up that lazy mouse a bit so we can just get a little bit of a tail. Want a little bit more than that. Perfect. So now we're gonna go ahead and say, let's start painting where we want this to be. Mm 
And we're going to start with just drawing out the shape. We're going to get that main shape in there. And then we're going to refine this. And I'm not worried about how clean these are. I'm just looking for the overall shape itself. And now we have in the concept, it kind of comes to a point. So we do want to honor that, but it definitely flares out a lot. Okay, we could turn off Lazy Mouse for a second. We could just paint that in real fast. Do boom, 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 boom. Just gonna quickly just paint that in there. Okay, I'm gonna hit one a couple times because that will fill in any holes. It's just repeating that. And now this looks nothing like what we want. So let's go back here. And now we're gonna go ahead and switch colors. So now we have a red color. So if I press Alt, I can paint with red. And then of course, if I let go of Alt, I can paint with black. So now we're just gonna come in and start refining this a bit. So let's come through here. Yeah, say so something like that. Again, we can hit one to repeat that stroke. And then this actually rounds in a little bit more. So we'll come in here like this. There we go. Hit one a couple times, make that a sharper edge. Let's get a smaller brush. So if we want a super sharp edge, what we can do is we can initially paint this and then we can come back and cut away. Have that nice sharp edge right there. And now with this paintbrush, we kind of get an idea of where his nose and stuff is gonna be. Because we're making him a chibi character, I'm actually gonna wanna, let's use Move Infinite. I wanna make his nose a little bit more prominent. So let's do this. Yeah, there we go. I want him to have a little bit more of a nose. We want that shadow information. So again, without worrying about extra topology, the paint is gonna help us kind of redefine this a bit more. This is gonna help us give us that nice look that we're going for. Okay, great. Let's go back to our paintbrush. Let's come in here and let's clean this up just a bit. So. Get a smaller one. Let's come in here. I'm just kind of tracing this a bit. And hit one a few times. There we go, that's a little bit better. There we go. And I actually am gonna want this to be a little bit more extended. Come in like that. There we go. Cause we're gonna have some stitching that's gonna come in like this and come down like that. So that's gonna help honor that stitching. Now they drew uh, black lines in there, but we're gonna actually, I'm thinking about doing a sculptural approach to that. Cause I'm gonna want stitches. I can do stitches sculpturally, but for the low res and for the animation, we'll do stitches more as a texture. So, cause eventually we will 3D print him moving forward. So let's come in here. Let's make this like that. Perfect. Okay. That's actually pretty good. So that actually looks pretty good. So now we're gonna go ahead and save this. And then we're gonna figure out the eyeballs themselves. So let's come in here. And now let's go white. Actually, I'm doing red for some reason. Let's get this eye in here like such. Okay, let's go to stroke. Let's turn off lazy mouse. Let's just paint this in real fast. There we go. Say something like this. 
Boom, and then of course we'll hit one a bunch of times just to make sure we fill in all that nice technical know-how. That made no sense what I just said, but we're just filling that in so we make sure there's no holes. There you go. There we go. Okay, there we go. So those eyes actually look pretty good. Pretty happy with those. So now we can actually now take that paint and we can convert that into some topology. Let me actually check real quick. Making these 3D models seem like, does it also depend on the software? So, so it depends on what your goal is. So ZBrush is the world's best AAA standard digital sculpting platform. And ZBrush is designed specifically for artists to help create. And so with that being said, a lot of studios from VFX to, uh, and animation to games, to jewelry, to architecture, rapid prototyping, toys, collectibles, etc. Uh, ZBrush is, yes, it, it's designed to make things faster, easier, and to have a limitless creation process. And there are tons of tools out there. Uh, here at Maxon, we actually have Cinema 4D, which is an amazing motion graphics uh, software. We have, um, we have Redshift, which is great for rendering, uh, for photorealistic rendering. And, you know, we have ZBrush for sculpting and then there's other platforms. So it, it depends on what your goal is at the end of the day. Um, there are softwares out there that you can learn a lot on. And I think those softwares out there that are free are perfect for learning, getting your feet wet, et cetera, et cetera. But we also have a student license for very cheap. If you go to our Maxon support page and you are at a school and you're in the middle of learning and you want to get ZBrush, you can actually go ahead and, and do that. So we have the ability to, to help you get into professional software quick, fast, and in a hurry. And it's really just amazing for you. So, you know, um, it's not that expensive and it's really just ultimately uh, good to get your feet wet. So it depends on what your goal is. Um, I do a lot of 3D printing, a lot of things for toys, collectibles, and also game props and animation. So I kind of have my feet in a few different industries and ultimately uh, ZBrush is the one tool that makes it near and dear for me. I've been using ZBrush for over 10 years, been working professionally for the last four and a half years. And honestly, it's just a joy to be able to just come in and create. And that's what ZBrush allows me to do. So honestly, that's 100%. I felt that way since the day I picked up ZBrush and there hasn't been a software for me personally as an artist, not as Maxon, just as an artist, me personally, ZBrush has been the number one tool for me to do all my creative processing. So does it depend on the software? It depends on you. You know, if you really enjoy creating, then yeah, absolutely. I would say software plays a key role in consistency, comfortability, and the, and the, the freedom to do what you want to do when you want to do it. So yeah, it, it depends. And if you find something that you like, go for it. You know, that's actually one of the reasons why I said earlier in this stream, I love coming on and helping create because it's just something that allows us to, to absolutely get uh, the ability to share that information as fast as possible. So hopefully that's helpful, but yeah. Okay. Great question, by the way. You can add a small Easter egg in your Deadpool just for fun. Oh, oh, absolutely. You know we're going to. Uh, how much of the software do you have to know to really uh, get to get good at? Uh, because in different videos, they say you only have to know three brushes. Thank you in advance. Great concept results. Andrew, this is a fantastic question. Um, so... It depends on what you're trying to do in the software. If you wanna be an amazing sculptor and you're focusing on just sculpture work, ZBrush, for every dollar you spend, there's a feature, right? ZBrush is feature packed with a ton of stuff, but you are actually able to, to just, yeah, there are artists out there who use three brushes, two features and a partridge in a pear tree. Absolutely, there's, that's fact. So because of that, um, and that's the part of the freedom of ZBrush. It lets you do whatever you want, however you want, whenever you want, <laughs> you know? So um, yeah, 100% that is, that is true. There's truth in that. But in my opinion, I am a learner who wants to know how something works. And ZBrush has a lot of things in there that, you know, those artists that use three brushes, they could probably do things a little bit faster if they were aware of more within the program. But sometimes the industry is so busy, it doesn't allow you uh, the time to sit there and experiment. And some people have just gotten into it to create art. They got really good at it. 
they knew how to use that process. They don't want to deviate from that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I wouldn't want to deviate from something if I got paid to do a very specific thing. So it's hard to branch out when you're so busy at your job. So for those artists who are saying like, oh, use three features, you know, five brushes and that's it. That's because that's what they are really good at. And that helps them in their process. For you, you're a different artist, you're a different person. So for me, I use a ton of features. I use a ton of brushes. I love to experiment during my creative process, but I will tell you when I'm on a deadline and somebody's like, I need this tomorrow or I need this next week. I go to my go-tos. I don't experiment. I shut the experiment process in my brain down and I just focus on the things I know is going to get me the results fast. And that's the difference. And so for those artists, again, that say that, that's what gets the job done and gets them moving on and lets them continue working. So there's more behind it than just, just use these three brushes and you're done. There's a lot more to that. Um, and so it just depends on what it is you want. But the more you know about your software, whether it be ZBrush, Cinema 4D, Blender, Maya, whatever, the more you know about your software, the easier it is to create something because you'll know what the go-tos are. So my advice, don't stop your learning. Even if you are busy, continue going because there are things that are just gonna make your job a lot more helpful down the line. All right, that's enough of my rant. <laughs> that's my rant and I'm sticking to it. Now let's go through here and let's do our masking thing. So we're gonna make this into actual geometry. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna go mask by color, which is here under the masking, mask by poly paint. And now I got this head and we're gonna turn this into geometry. First, we're gonna mask off this dark paint. So see here, if I invert, I got my mask. And now we're gonna just isolate this for a second. And we're gonna go here to, um, our sub tool, we're gonna to go down to our extract and we're gonna say we want single sided geometry. So thickness at zero and we're gonna go ahead and say extract. And now if I were to hit accept, we could see here that we have this topology and here it's again, it's a perfect representation of that poly paint that we did. And that's why we chose that. And here now we're going to go to deformation and we're going to actually polish by features. So if we zoom all the way in, you can see here that there's rough warblies and stuff. But notice that there's a mask as well. If I, in, if I uh, press and hold control and tap, I have a mask. And so I'm going to actually soften that mask a little bit. And then I'm just going to polish by features. And what this will do is this is going to help kind of straighten this up a little bit. It's going to clean up these edges. I could also just take the move brush at this point and just kind of clean up some of these lines. There we go. Just something, it doesn't have to be super perfect. And now here, what I can do, is let's go to geometry. We got our eyes and let's go to zero measure. I'm gonna start with same because it's not that heavy. It's only 35,000 points. That's pretty low. And I want a nice clean edge. So we're gonna go with uh, 3,500. So we'll say same keep groups down to zero. We don't want the, we don't want the shrinkage or the smoothing to happen. And then let's go adaptive down to zero. Let's go ahead and say zebra mesh. Okay. And then we're going to say half and we're just going to start stepping down and we're going to see how low we can go before we start breaking the topology. Well, oh, that's actually pretty good. That's less than a thousand. Okay. This is going to be hard surface. So that's a little too low, so let's step up. Yeah, let's say something like this. Maybe maybe go back to something more like this. Yeah, so let's go 2,000, so that's 1,000 a piece. That's perfectly fine. All right. And now here, we're gonna hide this face. We're gonna put this one back. Okay, and now we're gonna come up here to geometry. We're gonna give it some thickness. So we're gonna go to dynamic subdivision. We're gonna hit our dynamic. And again, you can see here, it's actually giving a nice job with preserving those points. And then we're just going to turn off smooth surface here. We had it on one and that actually that's not too bad. We'll leave that on, but we're really going to go and give it some thickness here. So say something like that. So if I turn off dynamic, you'll see here, it's still single sided geometry and that's perfectly fine. We're going to move this in just a bit and I'm going to hit D and that's going to showcase to me, what this looks like with some thickness. And then let's grab this black color here. Let's go ahead and say filler object. So that is nice and black. Okay, 
And then from here, we can turn around and place some eyes into his head. So let's go ahead and just insert. And depending on how crazy you wanna get, we could add in just like a, a, an eye slit. So we can actually add in just like geometry underneath that single sided, but I want a little bit of like beveling to his eye. So I'm gonna insert a sphere and let's actually have this kind of a off white. So let's go color fill. I'm gonna just shrink this down by a ton. And let's just kind of flatten it just a bit. I'm gonna rotate this around. I'm gonna push this into his head just a teeny bit. I'm gonna elongate it as well. And now we can come back to here. And actually, so see this head right here, this head is actually the, we modified the other one and I like that. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this one, right? And I'm gonna come to this head and I'm gonna go to reconstruct subdivisions because we can get that low version. So there's 5,000. And now we have subdivisions on this. We can also have a little bit of, of uh, white underneath there. So let's actually, there we go. Oops, head hid, so let's do that. So now we can move this eyeball around. Oh, I also have AccuCurve still on, I don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a little bit, and smooth this down. I just wanna give this just a little bit of roundness to it. Again, for this mask, this is actually, I can actually push this up a little bit too. So let's go 0.02, that's fine. There we go. 0.02, okay, let's select the eye. Let's get that in there. There we go. So that way we have an actual eye in there, say something like this. And we could put a texture on this eventually, like a cloth texture. And then let's just go to geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld that. And there we go. And now we have this guy. And then now of course, let's go to the head real fast. And let's just take our paintbrush. So B, P, A. And I'm just going to come in here with our stroke, turn our lazy mouse back on. Is it not painting? Why is it not painting? It is painting. Oh, it's mass, that's why. <laughs> It was mass. Then let's just go ahead and just, I'm gonna unpaint a little bit of this edge just cause it's bleeding through under the mask, but I'm gonna keep the paint. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and just sharpen that a bit. There we go. It was masked off, that's why I wasn't painting, boom. All right, so now we have that in place, which is perfect. And of course, now we can start doing our sculptural work to it. We're also going to do the same thing here with this so we'll repeat that. Let's see here. Let's see, uh, I mostly want to just 3D sculpt and paint. I tried sculptures in the past, but now I may want to learn more towards uh, uh, Blender and stuff. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Sculptress is actually picked up by Pixelogic uh, before the Maxon merger, which is why we actually have uh, Sculptress here, uh, this combined technology, which is cool. Does your 3D printer print in color or do you paint the model when you're done? So I don't have a fully colored uh, 3D printer, but I do, I do uh, print in colored resin or filament to help save time, but I usually paint my stuff It's a great search. I've just started my zebras journey watching and learning the process. Heck yeah, absolutely. Is zebras 2024 still available with the Keyshot Pro bridge? Um, it should be, absolutely, yeah. If you come up here to render, 
and uh, you got external renderers, you still have Keyshot. Now, whether or not it works with the latest Keyshot, that's up to Keyshot. Uh, we don't have any control over that. So we just have the plugin that's still available for you to bridge on over. So it should still work as long as Keyshot supports that. We have it on our side here. So again, you just come over to the renderer and you have the external render and you can go that. And if you don't have that, um, which you do, but if somebody else doesn't have it and stuff like that, you'll, you, uh, I believe you can still download the bridge. So yes. What's up, Chris? Probably here right in the end again. Nope, we still got some time, buddy. I'm actually, go I go until one. We go about three hours. 18 brushes, two tools, and a, <laughs> a porter body. <laughs> Says the McBobbles. Heck yeah, absolutely. Your new Maxon uh, and ZBrush t-shirt just showed up. Woohoo! Yeah, that's awesome. Can you uh, repeat how you turned the paints you did into the mask to mesh? Absolutely. Actually, I'm going to do that right now with this body. So what you do is once you paint your area like this, so we have everything painted out, all you need to do is actually go under, um, you go under masking and you go to mask by color and there is a mask by poly paint right here. So you click that. And then what you do is you just click one of these swatches, click and hold, give you a picker, and then you hover over that color. So like, let's say we wanna mask out the red or the, or the dark gray. So we say, yep, and we say, okay. And now that's masked off. Now, what we want to, to extract is going to be the masked area. So we're gonna leave that mask. And then from there, you're gonna go up to the top under sub tool and you're gonna go to the bottom and it says extract. So sub tool extract, you're gonna set thickness to zero if you want single sided geometry. If you want it to be thicker, you can. The reason why I recommend zero for thickness is because it's gonna give you that single sided geometry and it's easier to Z remesh and get cleaner topology or to retopple it real fast because you'll be able to control all those edge loops. So because we're streaming and I work a little fast, I just use Z remesher, but you know, uh, and this is gonna be quote, the hard surface. This is gonna be like the plastic or the carbon fiber part of his body. So, which actually, but of course, you know, all that fun stuff. So this would be the armor side of it. So you would just go ahead and do that, say extract and then say accept, boop. And then now that gives you this. Now it picks the color in which you had selected. So if of course I wanted to have this be a little bit different, so I'm gonna delete this guy right here, right? And I'm gonna go back here. If I had the proper color selected here and I go to extract and accept, you can see here now it picks the color that I had on my swatch. So now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna zero mesh this, right? So I have different poly groups. Notice it took my different poly groups as well. So that's something to remember. It, it looks at your underlining mesh, your poly groups, all that stuff, and it really helps convert all that. If you didn't want that to happen, before you did the masking, just change your poly groups. I wanted to keep the poly groups because I used it for zero mesher, and it's really good. You can see here, I got a nice clean selection and my mesh is actually, for being zero meshed, this is really nice and clean. So I'll be able to use this in my final mesh. So, of course we wanna merge the hands and stuff later, but I digress. Anyway, now that we have this, I'm gonna soften this mask a little bit because I wanna actually clean up some of these harsher edges. So I'm gonna come down here to deformation we're gonna go polish by features, which will help kind of clean that up a little bit. And of course you can manually fix that with your move brush, just fix some of those warbles. Although a lot of that's gonna go away as soon as we Z remesh. And then, so we'll say something like that. Okay, great. Again here, you can even unmask this a bit and just fix that. There we go, say something like that, perfect. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can go to geometry, Z remesher. We're gonna keep our groups. We're gonna drop that down, to smooth groups down to zero. Adaptive size down to zero. This is gonna help give even quads. And then let's kick up this. Again, we have 50,000, so we can actually say same. And we can go ahead and Z remesh this. That's pretty dense for what it is. So that'll give us a good starting spot. And then we can say half. And we can start Z remeshing down. and see how low we can go. 
So say something like this is pretty good. And now we can actually take our move and we can actually sharpen this up, sharpen this up, clean up some of this. This is actually pretty good. There we go. Make that nice sharp edges. So we'll do an extraction from this, making it thicker. So let's say something like that. Let's inspect the rest of the mesh. So yeah, that's pretty good there. Okay, we do have a little bit of an issue here, but that's okay. We can end it, we can end up fixing this. So we can actually do this. So we can actually take our Z modeler. So this triangle here is just not really helping us. So we could actually come through and say delete. Get get those out of here. Nope, didn't want that. I wanted to grab this point. And then here we can actually come in and extrude this edge. Snap that down. I can just fix these real fast. I can also just tap, tap. That'll help right there. Okay, come over here, grab this. And again, if we wanted to, we can come through here. We can actually just delete that and make this very similar here. Boom, boom, boom. We can just fix these up real quick. Oh, grab this, grab this one. There we go. Just move this around. Let's actually just grab the move brush. So this is how you can just spend some time fixing your topology. Of course here. Let's lift this up just a teeny bit. So all that's kind of colliding right now. Or it's like it's going down and into the skin. We're not gonna want that. We're gonna give it some thickness, but we definitely want to be able to just make that. I can even just like do a light smooth, see if that works. There we go. Sometimes it takes, it's perfectly fine to take some time and just see how that works. And of course I'm fixing both at the same time. There we go. So we can push this down. There we go. There we go. Let's come back over here. Let's actually fix this, this, and this. And there we go. Say something like that. Okay. And then let's go ahead and let's give this some thickness. So let's go same thing, dynamic, maybe smooth down to one, give it a little bit of thickness here. There we go. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. I like that. And now, of course, we don't really need this mask anymore. So now let's grab this real quick. Let's fill. Let's fill this with that dark color, and then let's go ahead and let's fill this body with all red. So there we go. So now we have some thickness on his actual armor. Just brings it up that much more. And let's go ahead and hit save. Ian, have you tried ex using Extract uh, Pro Plus? Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's a cool plugin. It does it does like one or two extra things. It's like one or two extra steps that using the extract method does. But it's it's just a it's just a uh, a more elaborate version of what ZBrush can already do. That's the cool thing about plugins is that you know a lot of people have come up with some creative ways and codes to just kind of move that process forward. Um, I, I like this this method a lot, but that is a cool that is a cool feature. So it's a, it's a neat plugin. Awesome.
awesome. Yeah, the mesh the mesh project masking brush is also really cool. I love that one as well. Okay, so this is what we have so far, which is good. Let's go ahead and hit save real fast. And we also need to create like a place for his swords to be on the back because he also has some straps over here. So we'll need to do that. And so I'm actually curious what the actual, because we don't have that information here. So if I type in Deadpool uh, character sheet. So of course, reference is king. So if we come over here and we take a look and we kind of take a look at what's going on. So yeah, 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 doobie doobie doop. There's the Ryan Reynolds version. It's cool. So he has a single strap coming across here. And then of course too, he has the plate for the swords in the back, which we can design that. So we want to get that in there. Doop doop. And yes. Cool. All right, that should be pretty good. Let's see here real fast. It's the comic version. Okay, here's something that's pretty interesting. So he has like some some straps that go underneath his arm and then a straight across. I do like that design a lot. I think that's a clever design. And then we can add the, uh, we click on this one, we can actually add the sword plate on the back itself. So we can kind of mix and match here, which is I think the approach I want to take because this looks like it's actually designed to be fitted to the suit. But I do like this kind of strap design, which if we go back to ZBrush, was added here a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. So with this body in place here, we're just gonna go ahead and drop this down to its lowest subdivision. And let's go ahead and just Control Shift D to duplicate that. And here, let's actually grab these two meshes and I'm gonna come through and isolate Actually, let's just do this. Let's just isolate this section right here. Why is that not grabbing? There we go. Okay, it's just being finicky. There we go. Just get rid of that guy. Okay, great. Let's just do this loop here, and then let's go ahead and just delete hidden. So geometry, let's get rid of our, our subdivisions. Let's go to modify topology and delete hidden. What's my approach for sculpting for head sculpture? So if it's realistic, um, I'll take one or two references of the actual head, and I use the blockout method which is just taking your main shapes. If you actually go back to the first stream where I did this head, it was very similar. I just took a big sphere, looped this on, and then I started uh, adding another shape to it. And then I merged those two items together, typically with Dynamesh is how I, how I do that. Um, but there's, there's a few ways that you can go about doing that. Um, you know, I actually don't like this the way this is. I changed my mind on how I want to do this. I'll show you what I mean here in a second. But that's I usually use the blackout method. Whether it's for realistic or stylized, that's typically how I approach it. Um, but yeah. Okay, so let's do this here real quick. I'm going to delete this here. I'm going to start over. But I'm going to take the body, duplicate this one more time. Just delete lower. And so check this out. I'm actually going to grab this. Let's delete hidden. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make a custom cut. So I'm gonna go to slice curve and I want this to come down like this. And I want this to curve. So actually I'm gonna come down about halfway, say something like this, more on his shoulders. I'm gonna hit alt one more time and I'm gonna do this. And this is, this is the curve that I want. And then from here, we're actually gonna go up to stroke and then we're gonna to go to curve functions and we're gonna do polygroups. And we're gonna go ahead and just get that curve in place. And now let's just grab, let's try curve flat snap. 
with a bigger brush. Might be a little bit too much. Yeah, I think that's gonna be a little bit better. I think that's better. So let's grab that and then let's just delete hidden. So let's come back up, delete hidden, grab this guy like that. I'm gonna flare this up a bit. There you go. Yeah, that's better. And now we can make this one piece actually. So what we can do is we can come over here to Z Modeler. We can make this one piece or we can make this two pieces. Depends on, on what we wanna go for. Might make this two pieces, but first I'll identify that piece. And what I'll do is I'll come in here like this and we'll do um, bridging. So I'll bridge this point to this point, this point to this point, say something like that. Actually, let's do this one right here. And then let's do mirror and weld. And let's isolate this and then let's split that off. So we're gonna go ahead and say split hidden. Okay, the reason for that is because we're gonna ultimately make it look like they're stitched together. So I'm gonna fill this object. I'm gonna come down to this one and we'll fill this object. There we go. Let's actually turn this guy on. Let's grab that, come on, solo that out. Perfect, come over here. Let's just scale that down just a little bit. We're gonna add some thickness. This is a cool song. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Okay. Kind of move that in just a little bit. Say something like that. And then of course we're gonna go with geometry, dynamic subdiv, turn that on so it rounds, and then we'll add some thickness. There we go. Yeah, there we go, perfect. And let's do this, let's come here with this guy. Let's add in some topology. So add in a little bit of resolution, say something like that. Okay, and then what we can do here is we can come in, let's actually mask this section, kind of bring this up a little bit. So you can see it's kind of, uh, it's protruding into his body just a tiny bit. We don't want that. So we're gonna come in here, mask this section off. I'm just gonna bring this in. So it looks like it's coming from underneath. And then we can give it some thickness. So again, we don't need to smooth this, but we can start applying the thickness. And here's the cool part. We can actually come in and just extend that just a little bit so it's underneath. There we go. And this gives us a little bit of layering. Now here, this thickness is uh, 0 0.003, no, 0 0.03, 0 0.03, bleh, 0 0.0035, uh, let's go 0 0.004. And that's good because then what we can do is come here to this one and do the same thing, 0 0.004. All right, keep that the same as much as possible. And let's add a little bit of smoothing to that. So let's control that smoothing by adding in a custom edge loop on the edges, say here and here. Yeah, that's perfect. Now, the reason why this isn't dropping down so much is because we have it creased. So if we come up to creased and uncreased everything, you'll see that shrink down a lot. And here, what we'll do is we'll come in, we'll add in the same exact edge looping we have here. So one in the middle and two kind of on each side, right? So we're gonna come here, custom, uh, we'll do uh, multiple edge loops. We'll get one right down there in the middle, and then we'll go some singles and we'll get this kind of strap effect like that. Cool. That'll give us a little bit more rounding. Now this is kind of, again, protruding a bit in the back but we are gonna be putting in, of course, uh, uh, the place for the actual um, blades to go. So we'll be building that next. Here, let's just shrink this down just a bit. Maybe move that in just a smidge. So we'll rotate that around. Press and hold control to do a, a nice inflate. And then here, I like to manually move stuff. 
having a little bit more control for me. Just so it touches. There we go. There. Yeah, he's starting to look cool. <laughs> All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn around and let's add in the back section for it. All right. I hit save. Let's make this. Let's make the next part. The cool part about all of this is that we're just layering a ton of this stuff. Like every time you take a look at something, just look about how you can give it depth, right? You start with a basic design and then you work your way up. So here we started with the body that ultimately had this painting on it. And that was temporary. That helped us get to where we wanted to be, which is eventually separating it out and giving us a little bit more depth. And we'll eventually add in some stitching or some nice crease lines to help really tie this together and make it look good. Now Deadpool also has like a collar to him and we can add that really simply. So here, let's actually do that. Let's step this down. And here what we can do is let's actually just use the modeler. Let's hover over this edge. So say edge, we'll go poly group. And then let's actually do Click and hold and press and hold, uh, tap alt until we get something that we like. Tap that again. Now here we're gonna go to Q mesh, poly group all. I'm just gonna go ahead and um, let's actually control shift D, get rid of that. Make that a separate topology because we have subdivisions. And then from here, let's step down. Actually, let's step that back up like that. Let's. I want the naming convention to be fine. Let's grab this guy. Let's go ahead and delete, modify topology, delete hidden. Just repurposing this. Let's go ahead and grab this collar right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and just extrude this out. Say something like that. Let's go ahead and fill this with black. There we go. And we can add just a little bit more extrusion just to give us some nice support here. There we go, a little bit more of a hard edge. There we go. And that's a little too tall. So let's go ahead and just bring it straight down. Can scale it up just a bit. And we'll add in that collar. And because of this right here, right, it's kind of warped a little bit. So let's take move infinite. And of course, we'll just bring this down. We'll just modify that just a bit. Just slight touching it. There we go. Boom. Perfect. And this head actually might be a little too tall. Just as I'm visually looking at it. So sometimes if you visually look at something and you don't quite like it, I'm just gonna make a small tweak. I know we had our character sheet that helped us, but we're literally just moving it down just a smidgen. There we go. Perfect. Awesome, I'll take it. I'd also like to thank you for the ZBrush Summit. Very informative, informative to understand the industry and it helps to decide the direction of work. It's crazy that uh, uh, prosthetics are also used in ZBrush. Oh yeah, absolutely. Prosthetics is huge in ZBrush. I've been watched from 2023 to 2021. Can't wait to get others, the other ones also. Heck yeah, dude, there's so much. If you're into toys or if you wanna learn articulation, I, I point this out every, dude, this is like so cool. You'll like this one. I don't think you ran across this one yet because this one is 20, if you guys want to know what I'm interested in, <laughs> here's my here's my YouTube. We got Akuma, we got a Deadpool mask, King, wait, wait, wait. we got Street Fighter, we got cars. You want to know what I'm into? There you go, 3D print upgrades. There you go, Adam Savage. Anyway, so if you type in, um, if you go type in uh, ZBrush Summit, um, I think it's Paul Bennett, if I spell his name correctly. Here we go. And you go to this one right here. Let me tell you, this is where he actually got asked by a question. What's funny is when you watch this, I'm gonna share it right now. When you watch this, I just want you to know that I was in the back of the room and I was that I was that guy who was still like, you know, just getting into the industry. Was this 2019? 
it's four years ago. I was just new to the industry and I was still learning and I was at the summit and I was taking massive notes. I was just in the back like this, like taking all these notes as I watched. Shane Olson actually asked the question. So fun fact, Shane Olson asked how to do articulation. And the thing is, is that he shows this nice, uh, this nice hinge joint and how he preserves it and he builds the whole thing. And, he, and it's a, just a nice elbow hinge joint, how to hide it, what they look for, what it looks like, how to preserve the mesh, how to come through. Even he's like, you know, there are people out there who have like live bullion approaches that are, he's like, I, I do everything manually. He comes through and he makes it all. And he ultimately showcases how to preserve the mesh and it makes the key. You want to get into key art. You want to get into articulation. Watch this video. This will teach you everything you need to know about articulation and getting started. And now just, you'll just apply the same logic to the different joints. So you got double knee joints, you got single knee joints, you got, you know, swivel joints, you got balls uh, joints, you got hinge joints. You have all these different uh, types like barbell joints. You have all these different types of joints. And the same concept that he chooses to use for the actual hinge joint can be applied to all other joints. Also too, just rip toys apart. Go find a toy and rip it apart. And that will show you everything you need to know about articulation. So just a little, little fun fact for you too. So since you're already going through that. <laughs> okay, so now that we got this going on here, let's make the back, uh, the back piece. And we're gonna start with pretty simple uh, pretty simple topology. So let's do this. Let's actually arc him. Let's stamp him right over here. So we're going to go stamp. Now, what we're going to do is we're first going to see how we want the swords to actually, like where we want them to live on his back. If they were to be on his back today, how would they look? Since the blade is over on this side, this would be actually over here like such. So what we're going to do is we're going to position this where we want that to be. And I'm not going to manually position this one. You know what we're going to do with this one? We're going to do the unthinkable. I'm going to delete it. <laughs> we're going to delete this one and then we're going to go ahead and control shift D duplicate it. And we're just going to go to deformation and mirror. It can't do that, Ian. Why is that? Well, because we have multiple subdivisions. So let's go over here, delete those subdivisions, go to deformation, mirror that sucker on over. And then we're going to come back over here to geometry. And we're just going to reconstruct all those subdivisions. If you ever need to do that, this is like a fun way to go ahead. You, you won't lose your subdivisions there. We're gonna place these right where we want them. We might even roll that just a bit more. Like such. And this is going to, there we go. All right, so that's gonna show us where we need to place our item first. Now we can, of course, get a little bit crazy. We can roll this more this way and maybe come up a little bit more. Okay, make that more in line with what we're trying to achieve. There we go, that's a little bit better. So same thing here, we're gonna go ahead and just delete this one and start over. So we always wanna, always wanna try to get the first one in there as much as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and go to Subtool. Let's just delete this one, yep, that's fine. We have this guy here, Control Shift D, duplicate that come in, delete lower. That's a better position for what we want. And then we're gonna go ahead and just come in here, deformation, and we're gonna mirror that. There we go. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pull that out just a bit. Say something like that. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and reconstruct those subdivisions. There we go. Let's go ahead and hit save. So now that we have this area, right, what we can do is let's actually pick this underlying mesh here. So now we can actually like bring this down a little bit, right? We can roll this around and we can find a better position for this to make sense. There we go, let's take a look. Oh, look at that. 
So cool. I love this dude. All right, let's go ahead and grab this a little bit. Let's bow this out. Yes. All right, now we can start making this exactly what we want this to be. Now for the swords themselves, let's go ahead and just grab the two swords and let's see how close we can get this to his body. Okay, so last week I mentioned that I didn't want the actual uh, pouches to get into the way, and they're obviously not. They're really far out there. So, But if we need to, we can scale those pouches down just a little bit more, which is totally fine. So we can come in here, angle this just like that. We can scale that down just a teeny bit more, and then we can move each one out independently. Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit better. Okay. <clears throat> So now that we have this, let's come in here and let's go ahead and insert. So we're gonna insert, uh, what do we wanna insert? Let's just insert a plain 3D. Let's roll this around, 180 degrees. There we go. <clears throat> Let's move this down like this. Let's position this first. There we go. Say something like that. That's going to be fine. And let's move this at... No, let's not do that. Let's start there first, and then let's figure this out. Okay. Let's go ahead and reconstruct and delete higher. Let's get some water too. <clears throat> okay, now taking a look at this, we only need to see the swords at the moment, so we're just gonna go ahead, go to like V7, turn the swords on. We only really need the swords at the moment. <clears throat> Pardon me, we don't need anything else. Here, I need to clear my throat, sorry, hold on a second. Perks of talking all day long. How am I scaling all the bags? Uh, they're combined. Yeah, the bags themselves are combined. So all I did for that was I, they, these are all merged together. So I just have this, I just have this linked here and then I'm just scaling it up and down. I just have them linked together. And actually before we do anything else, what we can do is let's do this. Let's actually reposition them real fast. Control-Shift-A. Let's grab all this, Control-Shift-A. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I come through like this. Control-Shift-A, make this all one poly group. All one poly group. All one poly group. All one poly group. Now what I can do is I can turn on symmetry. We can just go ahead and just pull these out just a little bit. There we go. So something like that. Let's actually look from underneath here. Pull that out just a little bit. There we go. I'm just a control. I'm just holding shift and control, and I'm just tapping that real fast, and then just with the gizmo selected, that's going to go ahead and just provide that. There we go. There we go. That looks a lot better. That's a lot cleaner. Okay. Let's put them right there. Now we can go back to V7 and just focus on this stuff here. But yep, that's how you do it. Loving the belt bags, by the way. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ram. Thank you for the link, and sorry to bother you with so many questions. I don't know if you know the artist, Sheriff Dawood. 
He does um uh does animation using layers. Yeah, I know of him. I don't personally uh like I'm not best friends with him, but I know him. <laughs> yep. Since you'll be posing this little guy, maybe you can briefly demonstrate how he does it. I would need I would need to actually take a look at his I need to take a look at an example of his. I can actually reverse engineer it. It's not too difficult. Um I can see how it's uh um I can I can see an exa I can look up an example and then figure out a way I would do it. I don't know exactly how he does it. That's the cool part. That's why I love looking and referencing um, uh, different artists because you see you see ways that they end up doing stuff. But let me take a look at, uh, at uh, examples of his work and then maybe I can uh, figure out how I would do it. Okay. So now what we're gonna do first is let's actually kind of make like a, hexog uh, a hexagon type uh, type shape to this. So I'm gonna mask this off and this off, and then maybe, actually, um, how do I wanna do this? How do I want to do this? You know what? What's the shape? Let's go back to our reference. And I'm not gonna, I don't wanna just guess. Because the shape, I'm, I'm thinking of one shape, but I bet you it's another shape. What I'm thinking of, ooh, we should make a lazy Deadpool. That's cool. Yeah, it is just like a, it's like a, it's just like a pentagon. Hmm, okay. Okay. That's simple enough. All right. So actually, you know what? Actually, I'm doing this the hard way. Let's leave this here for now. And I'll show you, we're going to leave that here for now. But let's actually go to our cylinder and let's actually edit Let's switch out of edit mode and let's drag this out. Let's go into edit. Let's come on down here. Let's change color so we can see what I'm doing. So now I'm out of edit mode and, I'm sorry, I'm in edit mode, but I'm out of sculpture mode. And then I'm gonna go to initialize and let's just get six sides, boom. Let's just get something like that. That'll work out just fine. And let's just go ahead and say, make poly mesh 3D. Let's come over here to, not deformation, poly groups, auto groups, group by normals rather. Let's grab this guy here and let's just delete hidden. Now from here, we can actually create some shape. Now this is all, this is triangulated. It's not gonna deform. So I don't mind the end gun here but we could get rid of the end gone if we wanted to. And I'm gonna call out a special brush here. I've actually called this brush out a few times. Where did I have that brush? Let me search for it real fast. It's actually by Henry Shervanka. Um, he has what, we, what he calls a mesh fusion brush. Um, and so what we can do here, so we can actually, let's come here. Let's go to bot brushes. There we go, Henry's brushes. Where are we, Henry? Here we go, Henry Files, Henry Shervanka brushes. And I'll also link to, um, I'll link to his stuff here in one second. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this brush, but let me link to it real fast. Let me open up a new thing real fast here. Let me link you guys to his brush first and foremost. So actually, if you come over here, we'll just search for it together. So if you go to Henry Shervanka here, and you go to his art station, he's an awesome artist, I love calling him out. And you go to his uh, store. Nope, not that one. Where's the store here? Why does it keep doing that? Here, hold on. Store, there we go. Here, and you can actually get this, this brush for next to nothing. In fact, literally he says zero. This is a cool brush. Boop. So you wanna check that out. It's a great brush. And the reason why I like to use it is because he's done all the work for me. Basically he's created all of these different planes that we can ultimately end up using to have nice clean topology, right? And so I think actually, let's see, does he? Yeah, see he has a nice, kind of gem or ruby looking thing here. So what we can do 
is we can actually drag this out here and then we can go ahead and this doesn't work actually on single sided geometry. So before we do that, let me actually give it some thickness. So let's Q mesh this up, say something like that. Okay, perfect. So now let's go back to that brush. Let's go to mesh fusion. I'm just gonna go ahead and let's turn off solo so you can see what's happening. I'm gonna drag this out, say something like this. I'm gonna go ahead and press and hold and control, drag and drag again. And that's going to fuse that. What happened there? Why did I do that? Hold on a second. Huh, interesting. Why is it doing that? Okay, you know what? I'm not sure actually why that's doing that, which is interesting. So you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna do this. We're gonna back this up. I'm just gonna replace this with that, which I could have just done all together. So if I want to clean topology, I could just use this instead. Um, but if you don't mind the end guns, you can work with that. So it, it depends. Not quite sure what's happening there. Might be the smooth function. Let me see. Let me just double check here real quick. Because of course today it's just, it's not loving me. Um, let's go to poly groups, auto groups, because we need the poly groups for this to work. Let's go back here. Let's do much fusion. It could have just been too thin, which more than likely is it. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to turn on symmetry. Let's get that nice and straight there. Boom, boom, there we go. Okay, yeah, that's, there we go. Let's go ahead and delete hidden. Oh, why do I have dual side geometry? Interesting. Okay. Huh, interesting. Okay, well, either way, we're just gonna delete it. We're just gonna use that. It's gonna work. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what happened there, but that's okay. Part of learning and figuring it out. So let's go ahead and just copy this real quick. Let's come back over here. Or what we could do is just literally just come to here and just drag it out. Be like, this is what we wanted. In fact, that's what we're gonna do. So I literally just did that the hard way. Did not need to do it that way, but sometimes it happens. So let's just go ahead and delete hidden. So there you go. So you just use the brush and grab that geometry pretty quickly, but that's only if you don't want end guns. The other way works out great as well. Okay, so now we can go ahead and kind of modify this a bit. And so instead of just pulling this out this way, I'm actually going to use the extruder or the, the extender rather. I'm gonna pull this out. There we go. Say something like that. Cause mine's a chibi and it's not super, um, you know, it's not, uh, we're not like realistically proportionate. We're gonna wanna make sure that we're not pushing too much the other way. So we can say something like that's fine. And then let's grab this guy and then maybe we'll pull this back. Yeah, let's pull this back a little bit. Let's mask that section off and we could pull that in. And that will be cool or good enough. And then what we can do is we can actually mask this side over here and over here. We can maybe drop this down just a little bit. And then let's actually grab this guy and this guy. And we can actually extend these if we want. this. Just get our nice custom shape happening. There we go. And that will be a lot better. There we go. So that was the hard way. <laughs> we got there though. We got there. Okay. So now let's actually come in here and I'm actually going to just isolate this real quick and just quickly just try to straighten these out. There we go, that should work out fine. Now let's give it some thickness 
And let's also make it a darker color because this one is a dark color. So let's do that. And then let's just go ahead and grab this. Make this all one poly group, come through, and let's just ultimately extend these out. Now from here, we can figure out exactly where we need to add some holes. Let's rotate that. Let's make that one higher. in here real quick. So I'll make this one a little taller and this one a little lower and then we'll, we'll combine some stuff here. Wait, what's happening here? Oh, they're at an angle. I didn't mean for that. So we'll bring this one up and then we'll bring this one down. There we go. See something like that. We're just finessing it at this point. Trying to make it somewhat believable. Or at least have it make sense. You don't want the blades colliding with each other. Okay. There we go. Something like that. Let's save. Thank you for the tip. I bought ZBrush right before Max on ZBrush came. Question: My question is: Is it still okay to use the old ZBrush for beginners? Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, so there won't be any more updates to 2022.0.8. However, that license will continue to be uh, active uh, while it is supported. So continue to feel free to use it. You can log in and you can do it. Our station is amazing for finding talented artists with unique sculpts, perfect for studying. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, a random question, but is is this how Funko Pops are created? Uh, that's not a random question. That's actually a great question. Um, and I'll answer it by saying that I used to work at Funko. I worked there for almost two years. And um, the way Funko Pops are created, so basically without giving away trade secrets, because I can't do that, what I can say is the majority of Pops uh, actually do get a base mesh design. So there's a team that actively updates and creates base meshes. And um, a lot of times too, the artists that work there will find unique ways to create brushes or stylized stuff that they can use for future projects. So a lot of times um, uh, you'll work off of a base mesh and then you'll build off of a concept, which is pretty common for a lot of studios. So um, that's, but there are rules, and this is where I can't tell you anything. There are very specific measurements for each pop. So in fact, I can look at a Funko Pop and I can tell you if it was an actual Funko Pop or if it's a bootleg, because there are things about it that you can just point out. It takes a real keen eye to notice the difference. And when you work there, you get a sense of that. So anytime you see like fan Funko Pops, there are major differences, but essentially, yes, this is exactly how you would go about making a Funko Pop. You would get the concept, you grab a base mesh that fit, and then you'd start modifying and designing until you get something that looks pretty good. So long story short, yep, that's pretty much how you would go about doing it. <laughs> Not a problem, absolutely. Speaking of which, actually, what I'm gonna do here real quick is I'm going to kind of define his, um, uh, so here I'm going to define a little bit more of his jawline real quick. So that's really intense. I don't know why that's so intense. I'm actually gonna come through and start uh, defining some of these areas here. So kind of pinching this a little bit, giving him a little bit more of a, uh, uh, like a masculine uh, head, but still keeping it kind of soft-like. So. Oh, wait, my symmetry is not even on. Why don't I have symmetry turned on? I don't know, Ian. Why don't you have symmetry turned on? Great question. 
And I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> so he's a chibi character, but he's a male character. So I'm going to push him just a little bit with a, a bit of a sharper jawline. But then we're going to go back and do a little bit of a fade on that. So I'm just going to go ahead and smooth that down just a little bit. So a subtle pinch on that. And that's going to just kind of help. We don't want to go too much. Up. Oh. I hit uh, Control S instead of Control D. There we go. So just give them a little bit more of a sharper line. I'm, so I'm preserving that edge, but just kind of re-solidifying that. So as we turn, we can see a little bit more uh, definition in his head. There we go. And here we're actually going to go ahead and just lift up the back of his head a bit. And here is where we'll soften this transition down just a bit. Just like that. There we go. We don't want it too noticeable, but we do want some shadow information right there. Bring this forward just a little bit so we get a nice good profile. Let's move this up just like such. There we go. So now we get a nice highlight on the tip of his nose. Let's smooth that down just a little bit. There we go. Perfect. And we see a little bit. We might be seeing a little bit underneath of that area, but that should be fine. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and hit save. What was my most challenging artwork or my most challenging work? Um, ooh, dude, that's a great question. I would say currently the most challenging piece I ever done was a personal piece. And it was actually my uh, Demon Slayer piece, my Netsuko and Tanjiro piece. So here, if I type in, um, here, I'll just come here to mine. So if I go in Robinson, Surprise, surprise, there's actually a few Ian Robinsons. There we go, great. So here, this was probably my most challenging piece. And it's because of the way the pose is. <clears throat> and I am no samurai. <laughs> like I, I have no idea, uh, but I understand, the, uh, I understand the position in which it needed to be in. And getting his pose was definitely, um, was definitely difficult. I had to stand in this pose a lot in order to understand it more and more. Um, and then 3D printing it was quite the challenge too. But ultimately, I would say this was one of my more challenging, difficult pieces to have done, um, which is fantastic actually. Here's the clay render of that as well. So like all this detail is actually poly painted. <clears throat> So, and I actually, looking back on it now, there's some things I wanted to change with it. I think his, uh, I think I made this, uh, his kimono a little too thick in some areas, but ultimately this was a lot of fun. And this was probably my most challenging piece. I would say my second most challenging piece happened the year prior, which was this one. <clears throat> in fact, anytime two or more characters are together in a single statue, I would say that's, that's when, I would say that's when it becomes very difficult because uh, finding the pose is actually the hardest part of it all, right? So there's definitely, uh, there's definitely some, some struggles to kind of come through and follow. But yeah, I would say between this piece and the Demon Slayer piece are, were some of my more difficult pieces that I've worked on. Um, as far as work goes itself on a professional level, I actually uh, have been quite fortunate to work with great teams that allow us to have a lot of freedom. And so anytime that you come across a problem, you have a team that come, that's there with you, it actually makes that problem solving a lot easier because you have somebody to lean in on. So, and, and that's definitely something that I appreciate. So, okay, great question, by the way. All right, so what we're gonna do is this is blocked in and this is fairly fine. I wanna finish in a couple other pieces real quick. So I do want to give him his bracelet real fast. So let's do that. 
we need to finish blocking out the majority. It's too easy at this point to want to go in and detail this, but I don't really need to do that. We can do that um, after the fact. Let's get all the other pieces in. So let's actually do this. Let's come in here and let's insert. <clears throat> Man, I am just like super, my throat is all over the place. Dead cute, not Deadpool. <laughs> Get some water real quick. Um, when is the Kecko Metal Quotes plugin coming back online? I actually I don't have the answer to that. I wish I did, but I can I can I can ask and see um, if there's anything I can I can find out. What is the max poly you want to sculpt before to be for game production and Unity or Unreal? That's a fantastic question. It depends. Depends on the studio and the platform. So if you're working for mobile versus AAA studio, there is definitely uh, there's definitely some some differences. Um, however, again, it's just going to depend. Like AAA studio, high fidelity characters, you can have them as high as like 250,000 triangles. That's quite high. But if you take a look at characters like Ryu from Street Fighter, he he actually exceeds that. He's like more like 266,000 plus triangles. Um, however, you know, if you're going for mobile, then you might only have like a 10 to 20, maybe 30,000 triangle limit. It just depends on the platform and what you're going for and what is being asked of you. So, however, if you are going for something for your portfolio, what I would recommend is that you just have something around 200, 200 to 250,000 triangles. Don't exceed 250,000. And, you know, you, that's for like a hero character. Um, but again, the industry is always changing, so it depends on what you're going for. Like if you if you love games like Breath of the Wild or, or Tears of the Kingdom, as an example, and you really look at it, those characters are very low. But the hardware is also very low as well. Like the hardware isn't super robust. The Switch is actually, for what it is, it's quite powerful. But it's but you can't have super heavy dense characters in there. They have to cut down the actual topology to make that work. So. Again, it just depends on ultimately what the what the goal is. So keeping that in mind, I don't know why I started from that. Oh, habit. Um, I'm actually gonna. No, this should be cool. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, my brain's all over the place. Um, so depending on what it is, yeah, it's just it's just all about um, uh, knowing where things are gonna go. But for your portfolio, like I said, it would be okay to to just don't exceed two hundred and fifty thousand, and that should be that should be okay. Okay, we're going to grab this guy right here, and we're going to go ahead and modify topology and delete hidden. And we're going to slide this, this bad boy down. Let's come on down like this. Boop, boop, boop. Now, the reason why I didn't do the... Oh, okay, cool. Oh, okay, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> let's well that's nice yeah there we go ended up getting some weird loops there that's just a weird funky selection the reason why i didn't start down here is that i actually want this a little bit thicker so we're going to just hold control and inflate that just a bit and then let's actually let's go here just a bit there we go and let's go z modeler and then let's extend this out Actually, let's do this first. I want some couple loops. So let's go extrude and press and hold. And get something like that. I'm gonna tap that. Give me that. Give me that, please. And then let's go ahead and extend this up. Say something like that. And then of course we can scale this down. We can turn on local sim in order to do have it kind of intersect a bit. There we go. And then we have actually like a nice little, if we look right here, it actually has some bumps to it, right? So we can actually come in here and go with a uh, poly group. And let's get a different poly group, say that and that. And we can actually Q mesh these up just a bit. There we go, say something like that. And then let's go ahead and fill that color. There we go. 
And then here we can come in, insert. We can add this and this to it. Give me just a little bit of a sharper edge. In fact, if we want to, before we do that, we can actually come through, we can add, let's add a middle edge loop. So let's come here, just hitting control Z way too fast. Come in here and let's get not in a, not interactive. Why, why are we doing it? Why is, why is that happening? What are we doing here? Anything? No. Oh, okay, great. Come in here. Let's go single. Let's go here. Elevation key poly group. Okay. There we go. Not, not a big deal. Let's delete that loop and let's just solo this for a second. Turn that off. Let's just delete loop there. And let's actually Q mesh. Let's do poly group. Make that a different poly group here and here. And we can Q mesh this in. Kind of have that flared out like that. Have that nice little taper like this. And then we can do single. And we can actually come in here, hover over this edge and slide the entire edge loop. There we go, then we can come in here Push that a little closer and then come in here, insert. There we go. Yeah, that's that's cool. And then we can actually add in some edge loops here and here, which will give us a little bit more sharpness. There we go. And then let's go ahead and mirror and weld that. Boom. Now we have the we have the wristbands on there. Hey, what's going on? Cicada, how you doing? Long time no see, how you doing? Glad to see you still rocking. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Much appreciated. You're not Demon Slayers, you were <laughs> Sheriff, you're so awesome, dude. I love your love your quotes. Not a problem, not a problem. Yeah, evening, how you doing, man? Definitely been a while. What you been up to lately? Okay. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we need to actually add in uh, the back padding of his, uh, his hand. So we do need to kind of correct his hand a little bit. This is actually still a little, still a little funky. So let's clean his hand up. It's actually up smooth a little bit. Let's move this around. Doing well, still doing things, teaching, sculpting, retopping for eternity. <laughs> I know that one, man, I know that one. Oh, that's awesome, man, glad you're doing well. If you guys don't know who Evening is, you should definitely give him a follow. Amazing artist. Okay. Well, dude, man, we should definitely catch up sometime, man. <laughs> if you're still on Discord, let me know. Okay. So now what we're gonna do, let's do this real fast. Let's go mirror and weld, because we weren't working symmetrically for whatever reason. Now let's fix this hand a bit. So let's do this. His hands are a little funky. We can clean this up. So we're gonna go ahead and stamp this over here so we can solo this. And honestly, actually, let's do this. Let's just work on one half of his hand. So let's do delete hidden. You need to go now, but thanks for the tips. Not a problem, gal, 741. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely, dude. All right. So let's do this. So I want a lower version of his hand. His hand is too, it's too detailed and it's too, it's too much right now for what it is, right? So I'm gonna want to kind of clean this up a bit. So we're just gonna do a Z remesher on him and 
we're going to go ahead and get this lowered down a bit. So let's go with half. Keep groups, all that good stuff. Let's zebra mesh. Okay. And actually, what we could do... Okay, let's do this real fast. I'm going to try to zoom in here for some reason. This has temporary poly groups, so let me delete that. Let's get a different color. There we go. Perfect. And then here, let's go ahead. Let's do this in half. Oh, I'm sad I missed the beginning of the stream. Hey, not a problem. It's going to be recorded for sure. So you can come back and check it out, but yes. Let's see, uh, can you delete loops in geometry panel to auto delete unnecessary topology and simplify the model? Uh, yeah, you actually can, you can, absolutely. I do that all the time. Yeah, I'll go up to geometry and then I'll go up to um, edge loop and delete loops. And yeah, that absolutely can do that. But you can see here, sometimes it doesn't work in your favor. I do that a lot when I'm working with like, um, when I end up, when I'm ultimately working with, you know, uh, like I'll pull up this cylinder, for example, and the cylinder here has all these loops, but I want to simplify it. That's definitely something that it'll just delete all the unnecessary loops. So yeah, hundred percent. But for a hand, something like this, I actually want uh, even topology across the board. And I just find I get a little bit more control when I do it this way. So yeah, say something like that. There we go. Hey, there we go. That's actually not too bad. Okay, cool. So of course, boop, we're gonna go ahead and fill that back with its red color. And let's go ahead and kind of clean this up a little bit. So I'm actually going to give this a little bit more of a shape. There we go, say something like that. Let's just refine this a bit. This actually ended up working out fairly well. This mesh is pretty clean. It's a little bit cleaner than I actually thought it was gonna be, so I'm happily surprised. Okay. That works out. There we go. Okay, I'm also gonna give it some thickness. So I'm gonna inflate that just a bit. There we go. And then his thumb is coming to a very small point. And that's not cool. He needs a proper thumb. Fortunately, you have to go a little busy at the moment. Thanks for the uh, for the for the fun stream. Absolutely, not a problem. We'll rewatch we the entire stream. Have a good one. Have a nice day too, Sheriff. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, is there a quick subdivide key? Yeah, the hot, the hot, uh, the keyboard heart, uh, bleh, the hot key keyboard shortcut is uh, Control D to subdivide. So Control D, Control D, Control D, uh, Shift D will step down. And then if you don't have uh, subdivisions, you just hit D that uh, does dynamic subdivision and uh, Shift D undoes dynamic. Me watching silently just vibing with the stream heck yeah thanks for being here much appreciated all right okay perfect so let's come up we're just adding a little bit of uh a volume 
Okay. I'm, super, I'm actually really happy with this topology. <laughs> I mean, it's not perfect, but what for, for what we're going for, I'm actually like, wow, cool. That actually works out. All right, now what we can do is we can actually, we can come in here real quick and let's add in a simple shape here to make this work. Now there's a few ways we can do this and a quick way we can do this is actually mesh projection. So we can actually come here And actually add this shape to it. Now that's quite intense. So we can actually adjust the intensity here. And let's just get this piece on there. We're just using the lazy mouse to control our shape. There we go. Now, of course, too, at this point, what we can do is we don't need to keep refining, 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 refining this because this actually gets ultimately polygrouped here. So what we can end up doing is just coming up to split unmasked points, come here to this guy, and then of course, too, we can just isolate this one piece and delete hidden. So geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. And then of course we can push this closer to the surface. We just really wanted this nice shape. And then we're gonna come in here. We're just gonna move this real fast. There we go. And just keeping it simple. And then we can come in here and of course we can do our zebra mesh. We're just gonna do half. Now there's one other way we could have done this too. We could have done this by actually drawing out the quads ourselves. So you can see here how this is very irregular and I'd have to like spend time to correct this. So this is one way to do this, but for what I'm trying to go for, actually there is another way we can do this. So we can come in here. So let's actually just turn around and delete this one more time. Let's come back over here. And what we can actually do is under brush, we have topology. So let's just go to stroke. Lazy mouse, open that sucker up here. I'm gonna draw here. I'm gonna draw across here. We're gonna come in, we're gonna go one, two. It gives us a nice quad. And we can do something like that. We can hold alt and drag that across, which gives us this. And then we can press S. And when we tap this, this will become this will actually become geometry, but what we can do is if we go down to single like draw size, then what it is is if we split on mass points, it gives us single sided geometry. And that's nice clean topology. We can just modify that just a teeny bit, and then we can actually add some thickness to this. So dynamic subdivision, turn that sucker on, add some thickness. Now we have this guy right here, which is coming in and giving us that little bit of depth. That thickness actually could be 0 0.0075. Doesn't have to be too much. There we go. And we can also, we can decide whether or not we want super smooth or not. If we don't want that smooth, we could just have it like this. So then if we apply that and then we divide, now it's gonna have a lot, lot smoother, a lot cleaner, which will work out just fine. And we'll leave that panel alone. And of course here, we're just gonna delete that lower and then we're gonna go ahead and mirror and weld that. And then let's go to the hand and mirror and weld the hands. So we're starting to get a little bit of layering that's happening there. What time is it? It's 41, so Let's see about getting the boots ready and then and then we should call the stream at this point. Okay, cool. Let's just hit save as real quick. And let's call this 003 at this point. We've done a lot of work, so let me go ahead and say 003. There we go. What do we do when we cannot subdivide true uh, due to triangles or holes in mesh? Ooh, that's a cool question. So what you need to do is you need to first identify where the holes might be and get rid of them in any way, shape or form that you can. 
So if there's a hole in your mesh or if there's something going on with your mesh, let's say there was an issue with my hand here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm just mark history so I know where I'm at in life. And then I'm gonna subdivide up a bunch, gonna delete lower. And then I'm gonna go ahead and selectively come over here and delete. And of course here, let's do one Let's do one even better. Let's go to, uh, let's go to slice mesh. Let's do something like this. I'm, I'm being really interesting with this, so don't mind me. I'm trying to create a problem. Okay, so you have holes, and you have slice mesh. What you first need to do is you need to identify if you have a hole. And to do that, step down to the lowest subdivision level. If you can step down to the lowest subdivision level, then that's perfect, right? Because that's going to kind of help you see that sort of stuff. However, it may not be super obvious what's going on. And so you'd want to go to mesh integrity and actually take a look and see if there's integrity to it. If that doesn't work for you, then what you're going to need to do is go to modify topology and you're going to want to just hit close holes. And that is going to go through and try to find and close as many holes as possible. If you have triangles, it's, you know, the only way you can really get rid of a triangle is to like actually work that triangle out, you know, either manually or that's where auto, that's where manual retopo comes in because that's really going to help you. But once you get that identification, the triangles themselves will, when you zero mesh, zero mesher is primarily going to be forcing quads. It's not ever going to try to just grant you a bunch of triangles. It's always gonna go for quads first and foremost. Doesn't mean you won't get a triangle, but some, but for the most part, it's there to quad, uh, to give you quads instead. Um, so from there, then you would just want to go ahead and just do a Z mesh. But you wanna do that close hole step. Sometimes if you close the holes and things aren't welded, you'd wanna to go to modify topology close holes and weld points. And because sometimes you might have floating mesh where it looks like you don't have a hole, but in reality you do. And so there is a way to identify that. Let's see if I can create the problem. Let me see if I can create that problem for you so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. If I come over here and go with polygroup and I have this guy and then here, let me see something real fast. Unweld. Okay, perfect. So here, without dynamic subdivision, it looks like it's attached, right? All I did was go to modified topology and I said unweld my borders and I identified my polygroup border. And this looks like it's stitched together. This should be theoretically together. But as soon as I hit dynamic subdivision, clearly it's actually a hole. <laughs> and so you would want to be able to go ahead and say weld points. And now if I hit D for dynamic, and undo it, now you can see here that that's actually welded. So before it was unwelded, if I control Z back far enough, you can see here that's unwelded, but as soon as I hit say weld points, that attaches itself to it. So sometimes you might run into that problem and that's how you would go about fixing that. So hopefully that answered your question. Quad pool. <laughs> Thanks, with bubbles. I love it. Is the lazy mouse part of your tablet, or is it uh, part, uh, or is it your computer? It's actually lazy mouse is actually um, in ZBrush. It ships with ZBrush. You just come on up to Stroke Lazy Mouse. It's a feature within ZBrush. Yep. Okay. Cool. So let's do this. Uh, let's go ahead and let's do the boots section next, and then. Everything at this point that we're gonna to do to the body after we do the boots will of course be, um, that's gonna be, whatchamacallit, like uh, secondary forms. Right now we're still, we're still technically blocking things out. Now here what's pretty cool is of course, going back to, we did pull some reference from Deadpool, boom. And we took a look at where everything was at. So looking at the original source, 
and stuff like that. We're just kind of pulling from some designs. Here, there's clearly like shin guards on one design. On the movie version, what does he have? He has he has some sort of shin guard and then uh, some sh some sh shoe separation. But what I want to do is keep want to keep true to some parts of the design themselves. So what we're gonna do as well? Let's take a look at his feet. I'm gonna drop this down to the lowest subdivision. Control Shift D for copying that. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete. Make sure I'm on the right one. Delete higher, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab these guys. That's why I had a poly group to begin with. And then we're gonna go ahead and delete hidden. Now we're gonna come through, we're gonna actually do some boot design itself. So, first off, do I want them going all the way up? We get to play around a little bit. So let's come over here to select lasso. And actually, I think based on the design, it looks like there's a little bit of a flap here. Now, of course, uh, when she drew this, she had black coming all the way down, but we didn't do that on ours. We actually stopped it right about here. So we made a slight change, but we can still keep the flap itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this stuff and do delete hidden. And then we're gonna modify this quite a bit actually. So I'm gonna come through here and we're gonna do a knife curve. We're gonna cut right about there. So that's really, that's really wrecking the mesh, right? So let's subdivide a few times. Just delete lower. Let's actually inflate this a little bit. So the way we're gonna inflate that, press and hold control and do a scale inflate. Then we're gonna come down, we're gonna clip right about here. There we go, that's fine. I'm gonna isolate this section, mask it off. We're gonna drag this straight down. There we go. And actually before, we're gonna drag this down. Yeah, just drag it down, that's fine. Say something like that. Okay. There we go. Now for this mesh underneath, we're gonna clip it. We're just gonna make sure that it's not protruding under the surface. So we just clip that. Boop, there it is. That way it's just nice and flat and it's out of the way. Once we build the boots, we can actually get rid of the feet because it's unnecessary mesh, we're not gonna see that, but for now we're just gonna clip it because we're using the underlying surface to actually help control the way that things look. So we don't want the boots to like feel like they're not a part of his body. All right, we're gonna go ahead and use move infinite and that's gonna give us some toe work. And now this is where we're kind of gonna shape the boot a little bit. Just using the move brush. I'm gonna push that in, give us some aesthetics. Now here, what we're gonna do is we are definitely going to crease our poly groups. And then we're gonna go to zero measure. We're gonna keep our creases. Let's do same. And let's get something like this. And then you can go half at this point. Yeah, keep that a little bit lower. There we go, that's cool. That's gonna work out fairly well. Just taking a look at the overall shape of it. I don't think we want it too flowy. We want a little bit more of a squared approach. Now let's give them a let's give them a tongue on this. So let's go ahead and identify this. We'll get the center of this, say something like this. Yeah. 
Yeah, say something like that. Actually, let's get rid of that one. We have a nice loop here. Let's make this a different poly group. There we go. Yes, okay, great. So here, let's actually do this. Let's grab this guy right here. I'm gonna come through here and I'm gonna do a split hidden. So sometimes you can do an extraction, like I've showed this before, where like, you come in here, you press and hold control, you drag this out, blah, 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 then you extract it. Instead, what you can do is you can use history for your, <clears throat> for your, to be your best friend here. You can actually just select this, invert that, so you have here. And then all you need to do is just go up to Subtools, Split, Split Hidden. And then because we're on the boot, we just control Z. And then that gives us that information back. And then here, what I want to do is I actually want to push this information in. So I'm going to actually Q mesh this in. I'm going to pull this info in just a bit. And do that a couple times. Because I want some depth to his shoe. And I'll do a little bit of a, of a scale. There we go. So now I have this, this kind of, uh, yeah, let's do this real quick. Let's put them over here. Let's go to V8, not the drink. Let's grab this guy right here. Let's pick the boots, there we go. Okay, so now we have this kind of this little depth here. And now I can actually kind of push this in a little bit. So I can use this as like the tongue aspect. I can give that a little bit of thickness. But what I want to do is I actually, I guess I didn't stamp the Deadpool over there, but that's okay. Now what I want to do is actually ex ex uh, extrude this up. And I can do it this way or check this out. We can do this. We can just grab this, mask that off, put that right up there like such. Just kind of select that and then control drag. Just drag that as it creased. Let's see here real quick. Let's make sure nothing's hidden. Let's go with crease, increase all. Will this do this for me? Okay, we could just stretch this up actually. Just stretch this straight up so it's a little bit taller. We wanted that to be just slightly taller. Maybe something like that. Maybe that's bowed up a little bit. Maybe that bows out just a little bit like that. Let's come in here and let's do insert multi mesh interactive elevation. Let's pull that in just a little bit. There we go. So it has a little bit of that flow to it. And then here, let's actually just give us a little bit of some edge control. And let's go ahead and grab. Let's pull this in so the tongue is in there. And we have to decide if we want Straps or shoelaces? That's what we get to decide next. To D, that gives me this kind of nice little roundness to this. Pull this in. And actually on dynamic subdivision, let's go ahead and apply some thickness. And let's push that offset in just a little bit. You have to head out. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, 3D Artist, for being here. Always a pleasure. Yeah, we're almost done. We're going to wrap it up here in just a few minutes. Okay, great. It's going to end up pushing that down. So it intersects a bit. There we go. All 
All right, that's looking pretty good. All right, so we have that tongue sticking out just a little bit. Now what we can do here real quick, and this is what's cool about this. So we can actually, again, I like to use history a lot with uh, my models. So here what I'll do is I'll actually control shift D duplicate this bottom part, but let's call this the, the boot, the boot here. And now what I'm gonna do is with all this history, I'm gonna go all the way back to I had this shape here, okay? And what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna isolate this section right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this part. And then I'm gonna split. Actually, let's do this. First, I'm going to isolate this part here. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna split hidden so I have the soles. So let me rename the soles. Okay, and then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this section here. And we're gonna go ahead and say polygroups, auto groups. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and, and do a control shift S to shrink that, make that all one polygroup. And then we're just gonna go ahead and say delete hidden. So now we have these different portions of this actual shoe. And here we can give this thickness now. So we can go subdivide, dynamic, give him some, some shoe, like the actual tips of the shoe if we wanted. And that actually might be a little thick. So do something like that instead. Grab that. There we go. Yeah, that's a lot better. So the first one was a little bit thick. Modified apology, delete hidden. Hit D for thickness. So that gives us that kind of that kind of thickness. This is actually a pretty tall boot, but that's okay. We'll 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 finish it. And then here with the soles themselves, which is this guy, we're gonna go ahead and just I'm gonna go ahead and just come through here and do a control inflate. Or we just turn on local sim and scale this up just a little bit. And then we're gonna drag that up, say something like here. And then we're gonna go and say B, Z, M. And we're gonna Q mesh this for some thickness. There we go, say something like that. And of course too, we can scale it back down just a little bit. And let's do Geometry, crease, and then crease our polygroups. So then that gives us a nice smooth edge. And then we can turn around and start making things color. So let's go to color, fill object here. Grab this area right here, color this. Boop. And yeah, sure, we can make the tongue black as well. Why not? For now, that will actually work out great. I am late, but you have arrived. What's up, Chase? What's up, Sloto? How you doing? Yeah, the undo, the undo after split hidden is a gem. 40 chess, <laughs> I know, right? Okay, and then last but not least, what we want to do is we actually want to come through here. So again, for something like this, I'm going to go ahead and just control shift D. Uh, sorry, not control, control shift D, not S. There we go. We'll call this the tips. Okay, we'll come back here. I'm gonna control shift all the way down until we get this guy. And then here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab these loops. Say something like that. Control shift X will actually expand that. Control shift S will do that. And then we can go ahead and say delete hidden. Yep, we can go ahead and say delete hidden at this point. So you're just building off of your original shape, which is such a great way to work. Okay, and then we can actually use this here. So we can actually, I'm gonna save this piece. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm just gonna control shift, duplicate that just so I have an extra piece of this. I'm gonna come in through here and delete these. So let's go to delete, boop, get rid of that. And then I'm gonna come into this area and I'm gonna go ahead and extrude this out. Say something like that. 
And then let's just go ahead and go to crease polygroups. There we go. And then let's just add in a edge loop here and here. And then let's make that like that. Perfect. So now if we take a look at everything. So we're going to just go back here. There we go. We have the basic starting of the boot. The boot. There we go. Say something like that. And we can continue forward and moving that. I'm probably going to work on this after the stream a bit more, but we have the starting points of the boot. So this is where we are right now. So let's go ahead. He has some pretty small feet. We actually might make his boots a little bit bigger. Actually, let's see what that looks like real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab his boot here real fast. I'm going to go ahead and just do the selection set here, but get rid of that. And then here, we're just going to, with local sim, we're just going to scale this up. Let's see what this looks like. Autosave, coming in clutch. Thank you. There we go. Actually, I think that looks a lot better just in that design. So we're not finished with it, but we got a decent block out that is happening, which is perfect. And this can get us the most of the way there. So here's where we are. This is where we ended up today. Let's go ahead and try on perspective for a second. I like showcasing perspective this way. Boom. It's like this. Get a little character turn. Control shift, boom. There you go. Yes. There we go. Perfect. And that is where we're gonna end today. Yeah, I used to work for Funko, Chris, absolutely. Yep, I worked there for almost two years, just before I got hired here. Anyway, guys, thank you so very much for coming in and hanging out. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you guys and to showcase work and to build stuff, answer questions. We did a lot today, which is really cool, so hopefully you've been following along. If the last stream itself is going to be... Uh, the last week's stream started the block out and then we got here. So just in about six hours with me talking my head off and answering <laughs> and so forth, you know, you can actually get a lot done pretty quickly. So thank you guys so very much. I'm going to continue doing, uh, working on this off stream because next week I'm going to be at GDC. So I'm going to be gone all week. So there won't be a stream for me. However, there will be a stream on Monday continuing 3D print prep using ZBrush and Cinema 4D with Scott Unra. So you'll want to definitely stop by and check him out and support him. Amazing artist, super good work, and he's going to cover all of his workflows and stuff like that. So definitely check him out. And then, like I said, no stream next week, but we'll reconvene the week after. So... Yes, let's meet up at GDC, absolutely. So I'll be there with the Sense Labs team and also with the Dell team. So you can, um, I'll definitely be floating around. Plus I'll be walking around, connecting with other companies and connecting with you, the community. So please feel free to stop by. I'm the only representative of Maxon at the booth, so we don't have a booth, but I'll be there floating about. And so you guys can hit me up, no problem. Thank you guys so much. All right, with that, I will let you guys go and talk to you later. Hope to see you guys at GDC. Bye.